The Grand Canyon, with its awe-inspiring beauty and geological marvels, has long captured the imagination of explorers and adventurers. It is a place of mystery and wonder, where the secrets of the Earth's ancient past are etched into the layers of rock. Among the many tales and legends associated with the Grand Canyon is the intriguing story of an underground city of giants hidden within its depths. According to the legend, a group of explorers in the early 20th century stumbled upon an entrance to a vast underground city while navigating the rugged terrain of the Grand Canyon. They claimed that the entrance, concealed behind a massive rock formation, led them into an otherworldly realm inhabited by a race of giants. The explorers described the giants as towering beings, measuring over 10 feet in height, with extraordinary strength and advanced technology. The story of the underground city of giants in the Grand Canyon has captivated the imaginations of many, fueling speculation and curiosity about its existence. Explorers reported encountering large human-like creatures dwelling within the caves, with one of the members saying that at one point, the creatures started to throw rocks at them. The allure of hidden civilizations, particularly ones associated with giants or other extraordinary beings, taps into our fascination with the unknown and our yearning for extraordinary discoveries. As they ventured deeper into the labyrinthine canyons, they stumbled upon an entrance concealed behind a large rock. Stepping through the hidden entrance, the explorers found themselves in a vast underground chamber filled with an otherworldly glow. The air was thick with a mysterious energy, and the walls shimmered with an ethereal luminescence. As they cautiously explored the cavern, they noticed strange markings and symbols etched into the walls, noting that it was a language they couldn't decipher. As they delved deeper into the underground city, their amazement grew. Gigantic stone structures towered above them, hinting at an advanced civilization that once thrived within these underground chambers. The corridors seemed built for beings of colossal size, with ceilings so high they disappeared into darkness. The explorers couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and wonder, as if they had stepped into a hidden realm of giants. The more they explored, the more they discovered evidence of a sophisticated society. They found remnants of giant tools and artifacts, intricately crafted with meticulous precision. The sheer scale of everything they encountered left them humbled and intrigued. As the explorers ventured further, they stumbled upon an enormous chamber that seemed to serve as a meeting place or communal area. Emerging from the shadows were beings of colossal proportions, giants in every sense of the word. The explorers stood frozen in awe and disbelief at the sight before them. The team reported that they quickly left the cavern, not wanting to overstay their welcome. Oddly enough, this isn't the first time that explorers have come forward with a story like this. The Grand Canyon itself is a place of immense geological significance, with layers of rock representing millions of years of Earth's history. The vastness and complexity of the canyon invite speculation and ignite the imagination. The presence of natural formations, caves and intricate rock structures within the canyon's depths further add to the mystique and potential for hidden secrets. While the legend of an underground city of giants may be devoid of scientific evidence, it serves as a reminder of the enduring human curiosity about the mysteries of our planet. The quest for hidden civilizations and lost worlds has inspired countless explorers and adventurers throughout history. It drives us to delve deeper into the unknown, pushing the boundaries of our understanding and seeking answers to questions that have eluded us for centuries. The allure of the underground city of giants in the Grand Canyon serves as a reminder that there is still much to be explored and discovered in our world. The vastness of our planet, with its uncharted territories and unexplored depths, leaves room for the imagination to run wild. It encourages us to embrace the spirit of exploration and curiosity, to push the boundaries of knowledge and to remain open to the possibility of unexpected discoveries. While legends and myths may not always align with scientific facts, they have an important role in shaping our cultural narratives and igniting our imagination. The Grand Canyon, a geological marvel and one of the most iconic natural landmarks in the United States, has long been a subject of fascination and exploration. While the vast majority of the canyon's surface has been explored and mapped, there is still much to discover beneath the surface. 
Hidden within the depths of the Grand Canyon are undiscovered cave networks, mysterious subterranean passages that hold the potential for remarkable scientific and exploratory findings. The rugged and complex geology of the Grand Canyon offers a favorable environment for the formation of caves. Over millions of years, the relentless forces of erosion, water, and chemical processes have shaped the limestone and other soluble rock formations, creating an intricate network of underground chambers and passages. These caves, hidden from view, remain largely untouched and unexplored, holding secrets that could shed light on the geological history of the region and potentially harbor unique ecosystems. Exploring the undiscovered cave networks in the Grand Canyon presents significant challenges. The vastness and ruggedness of the canyon make it difficult to access and navigate these hidden chambers. The treacherous terrain, steep cliffs, and remote locations pose logistical challenges for cave explorers. Additionally, the delicate nature of these underground environments requires careful consideration and conservation efforts to minimize human impact and preserve their pristine condition. Despite the challenges, there have been intriguing discoveries that hint at the existence of undiscovered cave networks in the Grand Canyon. Anecdotal reports and occasional glimpses of hidden passages by hikers, scientists and explorers have fueled the belief that there is much more to be uncovered beneath the surface. These accounts, while tantalizing, serve as a reminder of the mysteries that lie hidden within this geological wonder. The exploration of these cave networks could provide valuable insights into the geological processes that shaped the Grand Canyon. By studying the formations, mineral deposits, and sedimentary layers found within the caves, scientists could gain a deeper understanding of the canyon's formation and its evolution over millions of years. This knowledge could contribute to our understanding of Earth's geologic history and shed light on the forces that shape our planet. Undiscovered cave networks in the Grand Canyon also offer the potential for significant biological discoveries. Caves are known to harbor unique ecosystems, often characterized by specialized organisms adapted to the dark and isolated conditions. These caves could be home to species that have adapted to thrive in the challenging subterranean environment. The discovery of new species or the identification of relict populations of rare and endangered organisms could have important implications for conservation efforts and our understanding of biodiversity. The exploration of undiscovered cave networks in the Grand Canyon could also have cultural and historical significance. Native American tribes have long held spiritual and cultural connections to the Grand Canyon, and the discovery of caves and associated artifacts could provide valuable insights into their history and traditions. Additionally, the caves may contain archaeological remains or evidence of ancient human habitation shedding light on the early human presence in the region. To ensure responsible exploration and preservation of the undiscovered cave networks in the Grand Canyon, a balanced approach is necessary. Careful planning, adherence to ethical guidelines, and collaboration between scientists, conservationists, and indigenous communities are crucial. Any exploration efforts should prioritize conservation, minimizing disturbance to fragile ecosystems and cultural sites and respecting the spiritual significance of the canyon to Native American tribes. The Grand Canyon, with its vast expanse and rugged terrain, is not only a breathtaking natural wonder, but also a place of mystery and intrigue. While it attracts millions of visitors each year, it is also known for its unforgiving nature and the occasional disappearance of individuals who venture into its depths. The number of people who go missing in the Grand Canyon is a topic of concern and curiosity highlighting the challenges and risks associated with exploring this majestic landscape. While the Grand Canyon is a popular destination for outdoor enthusiasts and adventure seekers, it is important to recognize that its sheer size and ruggedness can pose significant risks. Each year, a small number of individuals unfortunately become disoriented, encounter accidents, or face unexpected challenges that result in their disappearance. The harsh environment, extreme temperatures, treacherous terrain, and limited access to emergency services contribute to the complexities of search and rescue operations. It is difficult to determine the exact number of people who go missing in the Grand Canyon each year, as comprehensive and up-to-date data is not readily available. The National Park Service, responsible for managing the Grand Canyon National Park, 
keeps records of incidents and search and rescue operations. However, these numbers may not capture all cases, as some missing person reports might fall under the jurisdiction of local law enforcement agencies or tribal authorities. Despite the challenges in obtaining precise figures, it is evident that the number of missing persons in the Grand Canyon is relatively low compared to the vast number of visitors it receives annually. The National Park Service and other agencies involved in search and rescue operations work diligently to locate and assist individuals who find themselves in distress. They employ various techniques, including air and ground searches, as well as collaboration with local law enforcement, volunteer groups, and specialized teams with expertise in wilderness rescue. The Grand Canyon's remote and rugged nature poses unique challenges in search and rescue operations. The vastness of the area, coupled with its intricate and often treacherous terrain, can make locating missing individuals a daunting task. The search efforts require extensive resources, including trained personnel, specialized equipment, and a coordinated approach to maximize the chances of a successful outcome. However, even with these efforts, not all cases result in a positive resolution and some missing persons are never found. It is crucial for visitors to the Grand Canyon to exercise caution and prepare adequately before embarking on any outdoor activities. This includes informing others of their plans, staying on designated trails, carrying appropriate safety gear, and being aware of the potential hazards and challenges that the environment presents. Additionally, visitors should be mindful of their physical abilities and limitations, as well as the potential impact of weather conditions, especially during extreme heat or flash flood events. The National Park Service and other relevant organizations continue to work on raising awareness about the importance of responsible outdoor exploration and the risks associated with venturing into the Grand Canyon's vast wilderness. They provide educational resources, visitor guidelines, and safety information to help mitigate the potential for accidents and incidents. By promoting preparedness, caution, and respect for the natural environment, they aim to reduce the number of incidents and improve visitor safety. As of right now, while the exact number of people who go missing in the Grand Canyon each year is difficult to ascertain, it is clear that the vast majority of visitors safely enjoy the wonders of this natural marvel. Nonetheless, the unique and challenging environment of the Grand Canyon demands respect, caution, and preparedness from those who choose to explore it. Through ongoing efforts in search and rescue operations, education, and visitor safety guidelines, organizations strive to enhance visitor safety and mitigate the risks associated with this extraordinary landscape. This hiker posted an interesting photograph to social media showing what appears to be a strange smoke ring. Oddly enough, they said that it appeared out of nowhere and detailed that the area they were hiking in had no signs of anything burning. At first they thought that it was just smoke, but said that it didn't change shape and appeared to be following him. Interestingly enough, this isn't the first time that one of these has been recorded, and there's some who think that they aren't just smoke, but suggest that they are something unknown. The hiker managed to take some close-up photographs of the object, with this one being one of the clearest, but as of right now, they aren't sure what this thing is, saying that they haven't seen one since. Oddly enough, others have said that the same thing has happened to them and that they seem to appear out of nowhere. Smoke rings, also known as toroidal or donut-shaped objects, are a rare but intriguing phenomenon that have been witnessed by many people over the years. These objects appear as perfect, smoke-like rings that seem to float effortlessly in the sky. They have been reported all over the world, from the United States and Canada to Europe and Australia. One of the most famous sightings of a smoke ring object occurred in 1957 in Fargo, North Dakota. Two police officers were on patrol when they saw a large, smoke-like ring in the sky. They described it as being about 100 feet in diameter, and perfectly formed. It floated silently across the sky and disappeared after a few minutes. Another notable sighting occurred in 1979 in England. A man named Peter Paget was driving near Stonehenge when he saw a smoke ring object hovering in the sky. He pulled over to get a better look and saw that the ring was spinning rapidly. The object then shot off into the distance at incredible speed. Despite the many sightings of these smoke rings, Scientists remain skeptical of their existence. 
They argue that smoke rings are a common natural phenomenon and can be produced by volcanoes, wildfires, and other sources. They also point out that many of the reported sightings of smoke rings could be explained by other phenomena, such as clouds or atmospheric conditions. However, there are some researchers who believe that smoke rings are a genuine phenomenon and that they may even have advanced origins. They argue that the perfect circular shape of the rings is not something that could easily be produced by natural causes and that the objects often exhibit unusual movements that cannot be explained by conventional aircraft. One theory about the origin of smoke rings is that they are advanced propulsion systems used by advanced spacecraft. Some researchers speculate that the rings are created by a technology similar to the Alcubierre drive, which is a theoretical method of faster-than-light travel that involves distorting space-time around a spacecraft. Another theory is that smoke rings are a form of cloaking technology used by advanced spacecraft to make themselves invisible to human observers. This theory suggests that the rings are not the actual craft, but rather a byproduct of the cloaking technology. Despite the lack of concrete evidence to support these theories, smoke rings remain a fascinating and mysterious phenomenon. Whether they are natural or extraterrestrial in origin, their perfect circular shape and unusual movements make them a compelling subject for researchers and enthusiasts alike. Although skeptics have said these smoke rings are caused by things like fires, Many of the eyewitnesses who've seen and photographed these smoke rings have said that there was no fires near them when the encounter happened, and it's for this reason that some researchers have suggested that they're linked to the unknown. Unidentified objects have long been a topic of fascination and intrigue for people around the world. These strange aerial phenomena have been reported for centuries, and while many have been explained away as natural or man-made objects, there remain a significant number of sightings that defy explanation. The modern era of sightings began in the late 1940s and early 1950s, when a series of high-profile sightings and encounters sparked widespread interest in the topic. This was fueled by the emergence of new technologies such as radar and jet aircraft, which allowed for more detailed observations and measurements of the phenomena. Although, researchers have pointed out that sightings of mysterious aircrafts go back thousands of years, and detailed that ancient civilizations reported encounters with mysterious lights in the sky. Over the years, there have been countless reports of sightings, ranging from simple lights in the sky to intricate craft with advanced technology. Many witnesses have reported seeing strange lights or objects moving in ways that defy the laws of physics, including sudden stops, sharp turns, and incredible speeds. While some sightings have been explained as misidentified natural phenomena, such as meteors or weather balloons, others remain unexplained to this day. In some cases, witnesses have reported physical effects such as burns or radiation sickness after close encounters with these mysterious objects. Despite the wealth of evidence and eyewitness testimony, mainstream science and government agencies have generally been dismissive of these sightings, often attributing them to hoaxes or misidentification of known objects. However, there have been notable exceptions such as the U.S. military's investigation into sightings. In recent years, there has been renewed interest in these aircrafts, driven in part by the release of previously classified government documents and the emergence of new technologies, such as drone cameras and infrared sensors. The U.S. government has acknowledged the existence of a task force, and many countries around the world have released their own reports and investigations into the phenomena. One of the most intriguing aspects of these sightings is the possibility that they may be evidence of extraterrestrial life. While there is no concrete evidence to support this theory, many enthusiasts believe that the advanced technology and unusual flight patterns of these objects suggest an intelligence beyond human understanding. The search for evidence of advanced life has been a driving force behind many of our efforts to explore the universe, from the search for habitable planets to the study of astrobiology and the search for signals from intelligent civilizations. The possibility of these objects being evidence of alien life only adds to the excitement and mystery of this search. As of right now, these objects remain one of the most fascinating and enduring mysteries of our time. While many sightings can be explained as natural or man-made phenomena, there remain a significant number that defy explanation. The smoke emanating from numerous wildfires in Canada reached Europe after spreading across several provinces and significant portions of the United States, 
causing thick smog. Although the hazardous smoke is gradually subsiding in the northeast, the fires remain a significant danger. Over 420 wildfires are currently ongoing throughout Canada, stretching from the east coast of Nova Scotia to the west coast of British Columbia. Officials in the region said that hundreds of these blazes are presently beyond containment, and numerous individuals have been forced to evacuate their residences. Oddly enough, someone was looking at a live camera in New York when they noticed something strange in the sky. The user detailed that they could see a large black object hovering above the city, which caused them to take a video of the live stream. The man said that he was observing the skyline via the live stream when this object caught his attention. As the wildfire enveloped the city, the man's eyes were fixated on a peculiar sight in the sky. He said that there, hovering above the city, was an enigmatic black object that didn't match anything else in the area. Although he couldn't make out clear details, he said that the object appeared to be sleek and streamlined, with no discernible wings or propulsion system. It seemed to defy the laws of physics, floating effortlessly against the backdrop of the night sky. The man quickly captured evidence of this astonishing phenomenon. The black object remained motionless for a moment, as if observing the city below, before it started to move slowly across the sky. As of right now, the video has been shared to various groups that research mysterious objects, and many users can't seem to agree on what it is. Oddly enough, People from all walks of life shared their own stories of witnessing mysterious black objects above New York, saying that this isn't the first time that a strange object has been sighted above the city. New York, with its iconic skyline and bustling city streets, has long been a hub of human activity and cultural significance. Alongside the constant hustle and bustle, reports of unidentified objects have captured the attention and curiosity of many. New York, being one of the most populous and heavily trafficked areas in the United States, has seen its fair share of sightings. Websites that track these unidentified objects have said that it's difficult to pinpoint an exact number of sightings, as many sightings go unreported or are dismissed as mundane objects, but noted that there have been numerous accounts of strange objects above the city. One notable sighting in New York occurred on November 24, 1951, when hundreds of witnesses reported seeing a series of bright lights flying in formation over the city. In recent years, with the prevalence of smartphones and social media, the sharing of sightings has become more widespread. Various videos and photos claiming to capture strange objects above New York have circulated on the internet, fueling public fascination and speculation. Oddly enough, some residents have reported seeing bright orbs flying around the city with some describing these objects as flying throughout the tall buildings, saying that it is like they are looking for something. These strange objects have been described as being no larger than a few feet in diameter, but those who've seen them have said that they have the ability to travel at extremely fast speeds. When examining these sightings, it is crucial to consider possible natural or man-made explanations. Many sightings can be attributed to misidentifications of conventional objects, such as aircraft, weather phenomena, or celestial bodies. New York, being a densely populated area with numerous airports, is no stranger to air traffic. Unusual flight patterns, unconventional aircraft lighting, or atmospheric conditions can sometimes create optical illusions that are mistaken for unidentified objects. Additionally, the bright lights and unique skyline of New York City can contribute to visual anomalies. Reflections, lens flares, an unusual light pollution can give the appearance of unidentified objects in the sky. Furthermore, the psychological factors of witness perception and interpretation play a significant role in shaping reported sightings. 
However, it is worth noting that not all sightings can be easily dismissed as misidentifications or optical illusions. Some witnesses describe unusual flight patterns, high speeds or maneuvers that defy conventional aircraft capabilities. These accounts contribute to the ongoing debate and scientific inquiry surrounding the existence of unidentified aerial phenomena. While sightings in New York continue to generate public interest, it is important to approach the topic with critical thinking and scientific rigor. The study of mysterious objects falls within a domain that has only started to gain reputation, and it's a field that seeks to investigate and analyze reported sightings using scientific methodologies. By collecting data, conducting thorough investigations, and ruling out known explanations, researchers aim to shed light on the nature of these unidentified aerial phenomena. In recent years, there has been an increased effort by organizations and government agencies to study and document sightings. There have been instances where mysterious aircrafts have reportedly been intercepted by the United States military. These incidents, along with several others, have raised questions about the nature and origin of these unidentified phenomena. The US government, through various agencies such as the US Navy and the Pentagon, has taken an increased interest in investigating and documenting these encounters. In recent years, there have been efforts to declassify and release some of the previously classified information related to encounters, indicating a shift in the approach to understanding and addressing these phenomena. The interception of mysterious objects by the United States military raises important questions about national security and the potential existence of advanced aerial technologies beyond our current understanding. The capabilities exhibited by some of these objects, such as instantaneous acceleration, hypersonic speed, and anti-gravitational maneuvers suggest the possibility of advanced propulsion systems or even technologies that surpass our current scientific knowledge. In recent years, there have been observed instances of marine life, including orcas, swimming closer to shore, and even entering shallow waters. This behavior has raised questions and sparked curiosity about why these animals are venturing into new territories. Beginning at the end of May 2023, fishermen and residents living close to the shore have observed pods of orcas swimming towards the shore, with those who've studied the creatures saying that their behavior seems different. One factor that could contribute to the movement of marine life towards land is the impact of human activities on their natural habitats. Human-induced disturbances, such as noise pollution from shipping vessels, offshore construction, and recreational boating, can disrupt the normal behavior and communication patterns of marine animals. In response to these disturbances, some marine species may seek refuge in quieter and more sheltered areas, including nearshore waters. This behavior allows them to avoid the excessive noise and disturbances associated with human activities and find temporary respite. One theory that's been put forward is that the Navy might be carrying out sonar tests. The impact of Navy sonar on marine life particularly whales, dolphins and other cetaceans, has been a topic of concern and scientific research for many years. Navy sonar systems emit intense underwater sound waves, which can have significant effects on marine animals, their behavior and their overall well-being. One of the main concerns regarding Navy sonar is its potential to cause harm to marine mammals. The intense sound waves produced by sonar can disrupt the normal behavior of marine animals, including feeding and communication. Whales and dolphins rely heavily on sound for communication, navigation and hunting, and exposure to loud sonar signals can disorient them, leading to behavioral changes, including altered migration patterns, strandings, and even physical injuries. For example, studies have shown that beaked whales, which are highly sensitive to sound, have exhibited strong avoidance responses to sonar exposure, leading to mass strandings. Furthermore, Research has indicated that Navy sonar can have physiological effects on marine animals. The intense underwater sound can cause hearing loss and damage to the auditory systems of cetaceans. Studies have shown that some species, such as dolphins and killer whales, have suffered from temporary or permanent hearing loss as a result of exposure to sonar. This can have long-lasting consequences for their ability to communicate, navigate, and find food, ultimately affecting their survival in the wild. In response to these concerns, efforts have been made to mitigate the impacts of Navy sonar on marine life. The implementation of environmental impact assessments 
has become standard practice to evaluate the potential effects of sonar operations on marine animals. These assessments help identify areas of high biological importance and establish mitigation measures, such as avoiding critical habitats or adjusting sonar settings to reduce the intensity and duration of sound emissions. In some cases, real-time monitoring of marine mammal activity is employed, allowing sonar operations to be suspended if animals are detected within a certain range. These measures aim to minimize the impact of sonar on marine life and promote the coexistence of military activities and the preservation of marine ecosystems. Furthermore, technological advancements have been made to develop quieter sonar systems that emit lower intensity sounds, reducing the potential harm to marine animals. Low frequency active sonar systems, for example, have been modified to emit less intense signals while maintaining their effectiveness in military operations. These advancements represent a step towards balancing the needs of national security with the protection of marine biodiversity. It is important to bear in mind that the issue of Navy sonar and its impact on marine life is complex and multifaceted. While efforts have been made to address the concerns and minimize harm, there is still ongoing research and debate surrounding the long-term effects of sonar on marine ecosystems. Scientists continue to study the impacts of sonar on different species, as well as the cumulative effects of multiple stressors, such as climate change, pollution, and habitat loss on marine life. According to the newly adopted alternative by the Navy, and given approval by the Fisheries Service in October 2020, it is possible that raucous naval exercises may cause disruptions to the endangered orcas in the region. These orcas rely on sound to hunt salmon and communicate, and they may face up to 51 such disturbances within a year. Advocates for the orcas argue that their endangered population, consisting of only 73 whales in this region, can be negatively impacted by even short interruptions to their regular patterns. Nora Nickham, from the Seattle Aquarium, commented that activities such as eating, breathing and nursing their calves are of utmost importance, especially for the southern orcas who are currently facing food scarcity. The unavailability of salmon, coupled with noise and disturbance, further complicates their situation. Nora Nickham says that they acknowledge the importance of Navy training and testing, but feel that the Navy has the ability and responsibility to modify such activities to safeguard the highly endangered orcas. According to marine mammal biologist Tim Ragan of Anacortes, the Navy must contribute to the protection of highly endangered species, especially the southern resident orcas during its exercises. He suggests that the Navy should find alternative locations where these exercises can be conducted without harming these species. As of right now, the Navy have said that they're not going to stop their sonar tests, but have admitted that it's been shown to have significant effects on marine life, particularly whales, dolphins and other cetaceans. The intense sound waves emitted by sonar can disrupt the behaviour, communication and overall well-being of these animals, with potential consequences for their survival. However, efforts have been made to mitigate these impacts through the implementation of environmental assessments, real-time monitoring, and the development of quieter sonar systems. Ongoing research and technological advancements are crucial in striking a balance between national security needs and the protection of marine biodiversity. Ultimately, a collaborative approach involving scientists, policymakers, and military authorities is essential to ensure the sustainable coexistence of naval activities and the conservation of marine ecosystems. The legend of Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, has been around for centuries. Tales of a large, hairy, bipedal creature roaming the wilderness have fascinated and terrified people for generations. While many sightings of Bigfoot have been reported throughout North America, some of the most intriguing accounts come from Yellowstone National Park. In 2015, a hiker claimed to have spotted Bigfoot while hiking in Yellowstone. The witness described a large, ape-like creature with shaggy hair and an estimated height of over seven feet. The sighting occurred near the park's Old Faithful Geyser, a popular tourist attraction. The rangers attempted to track the creature, but lost it in the dense forest. Despite their extensive search, they were never able to find any evidence of the creature. While some may dismiss these sightings as tall tales or hoaxes, many people believe in the existence of the creature. 
the individual reported feeling both exhilarated and frightened by the experience. While this sighting may seem far-fetched to some, it is not the first time that the creature has been reported in Yellowstone. In fact, there have been several reports of Sasquatch sightings in the park over the years. Many of these sightings have been dismissed as hoaxes or misidentifications of other animals, but some remain unexplained. One of the most famous Bigfoot sightings in Yellowstone occurred in the 1970s. Two park rangers were on patrol when they spotted a large, hairy creature walking through the woods. They described the creature as being over seven feet tall, with long arms and a powerful build. Some researchers have dedicated their lives to studying and investigating reports of the creature and point to the fact that many different cultures around the world have legends of a large, hairy creature similar to Bigfoot and argue that there must be some truth to the stories. In addition to eyewitness accounts, there is some physical evidence that suggests the creature is in fact genuine. Footprints attributed to the creature have been found in many locations throughout North America, including Yellowstone. These footprints are often much larger than those of any known animal and appear to show a distinct pattern of five toes and a mid-tarsal break, a feature not found in other primates. Despite the intriguing evidence and numerous sightings, there is still no concrete proof of the creature's existence. Many skeptics argue that the creature is simply a myth and that the reported sightings are either hoaxes or misidentifications of other animals. Others argue that Bigfoot is a real flesh-and-blood creature but that it has managed to evade capture and scientific study due to its elusive nature. While the truth about the creature may never be known, the legend of this mysterious creature continues to captivate and intrigue people around the world. Yellowstone National Park, with its vast wilderness and remote locations, remains a popular destination for those hoping to catch a glimpse of Sasquatch. Whether the sightings are real or not, the stories of these creatures in Yellowstone will continue to be passed down for generations to come. Interestingly, one Yellowstone National Park ranger shared their encounter on social media. It was a typical day for Ranger Jackson as he patrolled the grounds of Yellowstone National Park. He had seen his fair share of wildlife encounters, from grizzly bears to mountain lions, but what he saw next would shake him to his core. As he was walking through a dense wooded area, he noticed something moving in the distance. It was a large, hairy creature walking on two legs. At first, Jackson thought it might be a bear, but as it got closer, he realized it was something much more unusual. The creature was covered in thick brown hair and stood at least eight feet tall. Its arms were long and muscular, and its face was covered in fur. It had deep-set, dark eyes that seemed to stare right through Jackson. He froze unsure of what to do. The creature didn't seem aggressive, but it was definitely not something he had ever seen before. As it got closer, he could see that it was a Bigfoot, a creature that many people believed only existed in myths and legends. Jackson watched in awe as the creature passed by him, heading deeper into the woods. He couldn't believe what he had just seen, as he had always been skeptical of Bigfoot sightings, but now he was convinced that they were real. Over the next few days, Jackson couldn't stop thinking about the encounter. He knew that he needed to report it to his superiors, but he was worried about how they would react. After all, these sightings were not something that they typically dealt with in the park. Eventually, he decided to come forward with his story, and he was surprised to find that his superiors were more open-minded than he had expected. In fact, they had received other reports of Bigfoot sightings in the park over the years, but had never been able to confirm them. The park authorities decided to investigate further, setting up cameras and traps in the area where Jackson had seen the creature. They hoped to get photographic evidence of Bigfoot's existence, but their efforts were in vain. Despite their best efforts, no further sightings of the creature was reported. Jackson continued to patrol the grounds, always on the lookout for any signs of the elusive creature. Years passed and Jackson eventually retired from the park service, but he never forgot the encounter he had with the creature. He knew that he had seen something truly special, something that most people would never have the chance to witness. To this day, Jackson still visits the park from time to time, hoping to catch another glimpse of the creature that had captivated him all those years ago. The earliest report of one of these creatures 
dates back to the late 19th century. The incident occurred in the area of Ape Canyon, near the base of Mount St. Helens in the state of Washington. The story goes that in 1924, a group of miners were prospecting in the mountains when they claimed to have had an encounter with a group of large, hairy creatures. The miners reported seeing footprints that measured 16 inches in length and 7 inches in width and were believed to have been made by the creatures. The miners claimed that they were able to follow the footprints for a distance of about 5 miles and during that time they reported hearing strange noises, such as whoops and screams, coming from the surrounding forest. They also claimed that they saw the creatures at a distance and that they were covered in long, dark hair. The miners' story became widely publicized in the local newspapers and it was eventually picked up by the national media. The incident helped to spark interest in the existence of the creature and led to many other reported sightings of the creature in the years that followed. However, it is worth noting that the story has been met with skepticism by many researchers who have pointed out inconsistencies in the miners' accounts. For example, some have questioned the fact that the miners claimed to have followed the footprints for such a long distance given that the area was covered in dense forest and difficult terrain. Despite these doubts, the incident remains an important part of the creature's lore and has contributed to the ongoing fascination. In the years since the Ape Canyon incident, numerous other sightings of the creature have been reported and many researchers continue to investigate the possibility of its existence. In addition to the Ape Canyon incident, there have been other early reports of Bigfoot, including accounts from Native American tribes in the Pacific Northwest region of the United States. These tribes have long had their own legends and stories about the creature, which they refer to by various names, including Sasquatch and Skookum. One of the most well-known of these legends is the story of the Wild Man of the Woods which was said to inhabit the forests of the Pacific Northwest. According to the legend, the creature was covered in long shaggy hair and had a foul odour. It was also said to be very elusive and would only rarely be seen by humans. These early reports of Bigfoot have helped to fuel the ongoing fascination with the creature and have inspired many researchers to continue investigating its existence. Due to the creature's odour, it's caused some researchers to suggest that these are some of the earliest reports of the skunk ape. This large creature is a humanoid believed to inhabit the southeastern United States, particularly in the swamps and wetlands of Florida. The creature is said to be similar in appearance to Bigfoot, but with longer hair and a distinct odour that earned it its nickname. Despite numerous sightings and alleged evidence, the existence of the skunk ape remains unproven and many skeptics consider it to be a product of folklore. The first recorded sighting of the creature occurred in the late 19th century, when a group of hunters claimed to have seen a large, hairy creature in the Florida wilderness. Since then, there have been numerous sightings and reports of encounters with the creature. Many witnesses describe it as being between six and eight feet tall, with a muscular build and a distinctively foul odour, which some speculate may be a defence mechanism against predators. In addition to eyewitness accounts, there have been several alleged pieces of physical evidence associated with the skunk ape. Footprints claimed to belong to the creature have been found throughout the southeastern United States, with some measuring up to 17 inches in length. In 2000, a grainy video emerged that purported to show the creature in the Florida Everglades. However, the video has been criticized for being unclear and inconclusive. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the legend of the skunk ape continues to persist in Florida and throughout the southeastern United States. Some people have even gone so far as to dedicate their lives to researching the creature and gathering evidence of its existence. However, skeptics argue that the skunk ape is simply a product of folklore, and they point out that many supposed sightings of the creature are from unreliable witnesses or have alternative explanations such as misidentified animals or hoaxes perpetrated by individuals seeking attention or profit. In addition, they note that despite decades of alleged sightings and evidence, no conclusive proof of the creature's existence has ever been found. As of right now, despite numerous sightings and alleged evidence, its existence remains unproven and many skeptics remain unconvinced. These creatures have been a topic of interest and speculation for decades, Reports of sightings of the creature have been recorded all over the world, 
but it seems that Bigfoot encounters in national parks are more common than in any other location. The vast and remote wilderness areas of national parks, with their rugged terrain and dense forests, provide a perfect habitat for the elusive creature. Sightings in national parks are usually reported by hikers, campers and park rangers. These encounters vary from brief sightings of the creature to more prolonged and detailed observations. While some encounters are frightening and disturbing, others are more benign, with the creature simply being observed from a distance. One common way the creature is encountered in national parks is through tracks or footprints left behind. These tracks are often found in remote areas, away from established trails and roads, and can be difficult to locate. However, when they are found, they provide compelling evidence of the creature's existence. Park rangers and researchers often investigate these tracks, taking plaster casts and measurements, and analyzing them to try to learn more about the creature's behavior and movements. Another way the creature is encountered in national parks is through vocalizations. These sounds can be heard at night when the forest is quiet, and they are often described as high-pitched screams or howls. While some of these vocalizations may be attributed to known animals, others are more mysterious and unexplainable. Some park rangers have even reported seeing the creature with their own eyes. These sightings are usually brief and happen at a distance, with the creature quickly disappearing into the dense forest. Park rangers are often trained in wildlife observation and can identify many animals by their behavior and characteristics, but these creatures remain an enigma. There are also reports of them stealing food and other supplies from campsites in national parks. These encounters are usually frightening for campers, who may wake up in the middle of the night to find their food and gear scattered around the campsite. However, these incidents are rare and are more likely to be caused by other animals, such as bears or raccoons. It is important to note that not all encounters in national parks are real. Many reports are hoaxes or misidentifications of known animals. However, there are a significant number of encounters that are credible and have been investigated by park rangers and researchers. As of right now, these encounters in national parks are fascinating and add to the mystique surrounding the elusive creature. While there is no conclusive evidence of the creature's existence, the reports of encounters in national parks provide an intriguing glimpse into the mysteries of the wilderness. As more research is conducted, perhaps one day we will have definitive proof of its existence. The Sumerian civilization, nestled in the fertile lands of Mesopotamia, is renowned for its pioneering contributions to human history. Among its many achievements, the Sumerians left behind intricate carvings and artifacts that offer tantalizing hints of their advanced understanding of various aspects of life. A subject of intrigue and debate in recent times has been the presence of what appear to be timekeeping devices, often referred to as Sumerian watches, depicted in these ancient carvings. Intriguing carvings and depictions found in Sumerian artifacts have captivated researchers and enthusiasts alike. Among these carvings, some appear to portray what modern eyes might interpret as wristwatches. These objects, nestled on the wrists of various figures, stand out as anomalies within the context of ancient Mesopotamia. The Sumerians were renowned for their advanced understanding of various scientific, mathematical, and astronomical concepts. They were early architects of complex mathematics, the cuneiform writing system, and even the concept of the 60-minute hour. However, the existence of wristwatch-like devices raises questions about their potential knowledge of timekeeping mechanisms that would seem technologically incongruous for their era. In the carvings, individuals are depicted with cylindrical objects resembling modern wristwatches on their wrists. These objects display circular shapes and are accompanied by peculiar appendages that suggest possible crowns or dials. The specificity of their placement and design has led to speculation that these depictions could indeed represent timekeeping devices of some kind. While the idea of wristwatches in ancient Mesopotamia may seem anachronistic, it's important to remember that ancient civilizations had various means of measuring time, often using sundials, water clocks, and celestial observations. The Sumerians, with their advanced knowledge of astronomy, might have devised mechanisms to track time with impressive accuracy, even if they differ significantly from modern wristwatches. Some scholars argue that the wristwatch-like objects 
may not have been intended to represent functional timekeeping devices. Instead, they suggest that these objects could carry symbolic or ritualistic significance. In ancient cultures, time was often intertwined with religious and cosmic beliefs, and the depiction of these objects could have carried deeper meanings related to the passage of time and the cosmos. The presence of these wristwatch-like objects highlights the complexity of Sumerian culture and the intricacies of their artistic representation. Whether the carvings truly depict timekeeping devices or not, they provide a unique window into the Sumerian perception of time and the objects they associated with it. The depiction of wristwatch-like objects on Sumerian carvings remains a subject of intense debate. Skeptics argue that these objects could be simple adornments, amulets, or representations of tools unrelated to timekeeping. Furthermore, they point out the limitations of Sumerian technology in producing actual wristwatches as we understand them today. The presence of Sumerian watches on ancient carvings invites us to reflect on the challenges of interpreting artifacts from bygone eras. It underscores the delicate balance between recognizing the sophistication of ancient civilizations and avoiding the imposition of modern perspectives onto their achievements. Regardless of whether the wristwatch-like objects were functional timekeeping devices, symbols of cosmic significance, or artistic renderings, they serve as a reminder of the mysteries that linger in the shadows of ancient history. These enigmatic carvings compel us to continue our exploration of the Sumerian civilization, its beliefs, and its contributions to human progress. The Sumerians' Knowledge of the Cosmos The clay disk contains a star map from ancient Sumerian civilization. The ancient Sumerians had a certain level of astronomical knowledge, as seen in their records. Unfortunately, much of this knowledge has been lost over time, and only a few fragments remain to give us a glimpse into their understanding of the universe. The Babylonian astronomical knowledge in comparison to the later standards of Babylonian astronomy, seems relatively rudimentary. Ancient clay tablets from Babylon, that have withstood the test of time since the beginning of Mesopotamian civilization, document the earliest recorded instance of a total solar eclipse observed in Ugarit. The majority of our knowledge regarding their involvement in ancient astronomy comes from the Babylonian culture, which indirectly transmitted this information. In early Babylonian records, Sumerian star names are used, indicating the existence of a shared body of knowledge that was passed down through generations. A Sumerian seal depicts the sun positioned in the middle of eleven celestial objects. The Sumerians appeared to possess knowledge of the heliocentric nature of the solar system. Within certain tablets, they documented the presence of eleven celestial bodies or planets. The celestial bodies known as planets and moons, traditionally totaling nine planets and two moons, have been observed. However, there is some uncertainty surrounding the exact composition and understanding of these bodies in relation to their rotation around the Sun. A twelfth celestial object has been discovered outside of our solar system. Scientists are currently engaged in the endeavor of identifying an entity that potentially exists in an orbit beyond the outer planets of our solar system. The knowledge of our solar system was already present among the Sumerians, who lived about 3,000 years before the ancient Greek astronomers. They recorded their understanding of the solar system on clay tablets using cuneiform writing and illustrations. This information predates the ancient Greeks' knowledge of the subject by several millennia. The Sumerian civilization is widely regarded as the birthplace of human civilization and is recognized as the oldest in human history, with a history that dates back more than 8,000 years. This ancient settlement and civilization emerged in the region known as Mesopotamia, which encompasses present-day Iraq, parts of Iran, Anatolia, and Central Asia. The Sumerians had a highly developed culture and society, encompassing a well-established government, educational institutions, social structure, reliable food sources, religious beliefs, artistic expression, advanced mathematics, astronomy, astrology, medicine, various technologies, and numerous significant innovations. The ancient civilization developed a method of written communication utilizing wedge-shaped symbols known as cuneiform. They meticulously recorded their historical information and documents on clay tablets. Moreover, they demonstrated their innovation by creating musical instruments like the golden harp 
as well as crafting exquisite jewelry, metallic objects, stoneware, and textiles. In the Sumerian cosmology, the universe was intricately woven with mythology and spirituality. The Sumerians believed that the universe was populated by a pantheon of deities who held sway over various aspects of existence. Enlil, the god of air and storms, and Anu, the god of the heavens, were just a few of the celestial beings believed to influence human affairs. The Sumerians closely observed the movements of celestial bodies, attributing significance to their positions in the sky. The cyclical patterns of the sun, moon, and stars were seen as reflections of the divine will, affecting everything from agricultural cycles to the fates of kings and kingdoms. The celestial bodies were considered divine messengers, carrying messages from the gods to the earthly realm. Ziggurats, towering stepped temples, were architectural marvels that dominated Sumerian cityscapes. These structures held profound cosmological significance, often being built with precise astronomical alignments. Ziggurats were designed to mirror the celestial order, with their corners aligned to the cardinal points of the compass, paying homage to the heavens and symbolizing the connection between the earthly and divine realms. The Sumerians believed in a hierarchical cosmic order where the divine and mortal realms were intricately interconnected. They viewed the universe as a structured continuum, with the gods residing in the heavens above and humans inhabiting the earthly plane. This belief fostered a sense of responsibility to maintain harmony and appease the deities through offerings and prayers. Their Strange Creation Myth One of the biggest mysteries of the ancient Sumerian culture appears to be that of the inspiration and tale of their mysterious creation myth. According to the ancient Sumerians, their oldest scriptures tell of the earth being inhabited by human-like gods that had come from the stars. These beings made attempts to make the world habitable and quickly began to toil the soil and mine the world for minerals that could be used. After a while, the gods referred that their labor was too great and refused to have to work at such an impossible task on their own. This led to one of the gods proposing to create human beings that could be made in their likeness using the body of another god of whom they could force to work to gather minerals and toil the ground. Originally, the humans that had been created were unable to reproduce and have children as the gods were fearful of them multiplying. However, this quickly changed after two gods granted humans the ability to reproduce, allowing them to also leave the Eden they inhabited, a land that is translated to mean a flat terrain. This angered one of the gods, leading to a massive conflict to which one of the gods became the enemy of man and the other became the ruler of man and allowed them to be fruitful and multiply over the world. These terms of modifications, creation and the formation of an Eden have left many wondering instead that perhaps these ancient biblically similar accounts are evidence of advanced beings having genetically created and modified humans as a labor force only to be given equal rights and abilities that have slowly evolved. The Mysterious Origin of Their Language Though many aspects of the ancient Sumerian origins are shrouded in mystery, there is none more so mysterious than that of the origin and formation of the ancient Sumerian spoken language that is possibly among one of the oldest spoken and written languages in the history of humanity. When the first few written artifacts were gathered from that of the ancient Sumerian civilization, many believed that the spoken language of the ancient civilization was that of Akkadian, a language used by the Semitic people throughout the region as the written alphabet of cuneiform seemed to have matched the Akkadian writings and styles. Further gathered evidence proved that the language of the people was a distinct language now completely forgotten with no surviving remnants of the spoken dialect that predated the Akkadian usage, as well as being the first formed written language in history, soon being adopted by the Semitic people and used as a written language for many more millennia after the fall of the ancient Sumerian civilization. This loss of the language have left many experts puzzling over its formation, influence and possible similar sounding language descendants in the modern day to trace the evolution of language across humanity. Though it was, at one time, believed that the Akkadian language was similar to that of the Sumerian, given the adoption of cuneiform, it is now known that the language may not have sounded anything alike, 
and seems to be a relic of the past, with no evidence or trace of such a dialect existing in the modern day. Uncovering the mysteries of the language could prove to help researchers to better understand the formation of languages, the evolution of languages over time, as well as the major influences that the ancient Sumerian civilization had, being one of the first ever civilizations to have risen around the world. Throughout history, various ancient civilizations and cultures have left behind intriguing artifacts and symbols that continue to baffle archaeologists and historians. One enigmatic motif that has captured attention is the depiction of a handbag in ancient carvings, sculptures and artworks found across different countries and cultures. Interestingly, a man came forward and said that he discovered one of these handbags in the Middle East. He went on to detail that he's a digger that looks for ancient artifacts and notes that many of his discoveries have been sent to museums across the world. He shared this photograph with us, saying that it was his most recent discovery and that it closely resembled those handbags that can be seen in ancient Sumerian carvings. The man said that the handbag is a symbol characterized by its distinct shape and handle and has been discovered in diverse regions and time periods. From ancient Egypt to Mesopotamia, from Mesoamerica to Easter Island, representations of this enigmatic object have been unearthed, suggesting a shared significance across vast distances and cultural boundaries. The handbag appears in reliefs, statues and hieroglyphs, raising questions about its symbolic meaning and potential cultural exchange. Oddly enough, he said that when he discovered this artifact, someone approached him about buying it. He found this strange, as at the time he didn't tell anyone about the discovery and found it odd how this individual knew about this object. The digger said the man was very keen to buy it and asked whether anyone had seen it, at which point he said that he hadn't shared any photographs of it. What the man found strange about this individual was how badly they wanted this artifact, and the digger said that to this day this was the most expensive item he sold, saying that the mysterious individual gave him tens of thousands of dollars for it. When the digger asked the man about his name and where he was from, he said that the strange individual ignored him, but did say that before he left, the man said that if he found any more of these items, that he would be in contact. The digger found this strange, as he had never seen this man before and couldn't understand where he came from and how he knew about this discovery. Luckily enough, the digger had taken some photographs of the objects shortly before he was approached and was able to share them with us. As of right now, the digger is baffled by the experience and couldn't understand why the man wanted the object so desperately. He didn't take a photograph of him, but did describe him as being very tall, wearing a black suit with black shoes and talking in a very monotone voice. He said that he's never seen the man before and that he didn't blend in with anyone from the area. The digger said that he has no idea where the artifact was taken or whether it was purchased by a museum or for himself. Scholars and researchers have proposed various interpretations for the handbag symbol. Some believe it represents a vessel of power or knowledge carrying the secrets of ancient civilizations or spiritual wisdom. Others associate it with the concept of rebirth, symbolizing the journey of the soul or the transition between different realms. The handbag has also been linked to prosperity, suggesting a connection to rituals or beliefs related to sustenance and growth. The presence of the handbag symbol across different cultures and geographical locations highlights the possibility of cross-cultural connections and exchanges in ancient times. It suggests that ancient civilizations might have shared ideas, concepts, or even physical artifacts through trade routes, migrations, or cultural interactions. The symbolic journey of the handbag implies a common thread that unites seemingly disparate cultures in their understanding of the world and its mysteries. The handbag symbol has sparked numerous theories and speculations. Some propose advanced influence, suggesting that ancient civilizations received advanced knowledge or technology from otherworldly beings. Others interpret it as a symbol of a lost civilization or an ancient global culture that predates known history. However, these theories remain speculative, and further research and archaeological evidence are necessary to provide conclusive explanations. The enigmatic handbag symbol found in ancient carvings across cultures and countries continues to captivate the imagination and provoke questions about our shared human experience. 
Its presence suggests a common language of symbolism that transcended time and geographic boundaries. While interpretations vary, the handbag remains a potent symbol representing mystery, power, and hidden knowledge. Unraveling its true meaning requires interdisciplinary research, comparative analysis, and a deeper understanding of the cultures that left behind these ancient depictions. The handbag symbol invites us to embark on a symbolic journey, connecting the threads of humanity's past and offering a glimpse into the universal concepts that unite us. The ancient Sumerians, who inhabited the land of Mesopotamia, present-day southern Iraq, between the 4th and 3rd millennia BCE, were a remarkable civilization that laid the foundation for many aspects of human culture and civilization. Central to their worldview was a diverse pantheon of gods and goddesses, each associated with different aspects of life, nature, and the divine order. The Sumerian pantheon was a complex assembly of gods and goddesses, with each deity holding specific dominion over various realms. Among the prominent deities were Anu, the god of the heavens, Enlil, the lord of the air and storms, and Inanna, the goddess of love. The divine hierarchy established the power dynamics among the gods, with Enlil often regarded as the highest authority. Sumerian mythology featured captivating creation stories and narratives that explained the origins of the universe and humanity. One of the most renowned tales is the Enuma Elish, which describes the struggle for supremacy between the gods, culminating in the creation of the world. Another notable myth involves the epic hero Gilgamesh, who embarks on a quest for immortality, showcasing themes of mortality, friendship, and the nature of divinity. The gods played a significant role in Sumerian society, influencing various aspects of life, from governance and law to agriculture and warfare. The king, as the representative of the gods on earth, held a sacred role and derived his authority from divine endorsement. Legal codes and administrative systems were established with the gods' guidance, ensuring justice, order, and social harmony. Additionally, the gods were invoked for protection, success in battle, and bountiful harvests. Sumerian religion and mythology had a profound impact on subsequent cultures in Mesopotamia and beyond. One of the most significant contributions of the Sumerians was the development of the first known writing system, known as cuneiform. Using wedge-shaped impressions on clay tablets, Sumerian scribes recorded economic transactions, religious texts, historical accounts, and literature. Cuneiform was a complex system that allowed for the dissemination of knowledge, fostering the growth of literature and the preservation of cultural heritage. The Sumerians established some of the earliest known legal codes, such as the Code of Urnamu and the Code of Lipit Ishtar, which laid the groundwork for later legal systems. These codes emphasized justice, fairness, and the protection of individual rights. Additionally, the Sumerians developed administrative systems, with officials responsible for taxation, record-keeping, and maintaining public infrastructure. These innovations facilitated governance and the efficient management of a growing society. The Sumerians had a rich and complex religious belief system centered around polytheism. They worshipped a diverse pantheon of gods and goddesses, each associated with different aspects of life, nature, and the divine order. Their religious rituals and ceremonies played a vital role in society, ensuring the well-being and prosperity of their communities. The legacy of the Sumerians extends far beyond their own civilization. Their inventions and cultural achievements heavily influenced later civilizations in Mesopotamia and beyond. The cuneiform script spread to other cultures, including the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. Legal principles and administrative systems developed by the Sumerians provided a blueprint for future governance structures. Sumerian myths and religious motifs influenced the pantheons and beliefs of subsequent cultures. The Sumerians laid the groundwork for the development of urbanization, agriculture and complex social structures, leaving an indelible mark on human history. The Sumerians harnessed their ingenuity to improve agricultural practices and maximize productivity. They constructed intricate irrigation systems, such as canals and dikes, to divert water from rivers and distribute it to their fields. This allowed for year-round cultivation, enhancing crop yields 
and supporting a growing population. The use of the plough, pulled by oxen, revolutionised farming by facilitating efficient tilling of the soil and preparing it for planting. The Sumerians were skilled in working with metals, particularly copper and bronze. They developed techniques to extract and refine these metals, enabling the production of tools, weapons and decorative objects. Copper and bronze alloys were employed in the creation of intricate jewellery, statuettes and ornamental items, showcasing the Sumerians' artistic sensibilities and craftsmanship. The Sumerians recognised the importance of transportation and trade for their expanding civilization. They constructed road networks connecting various city-states and established river trade routes, utilising boats and barges to transport goods along the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Their mastery of watercraft allowed for efficient movement of goods, facilitating trade with distant regions and fostering cultural exchange. Sumerian architecture reflected their advanced understanding of engineering principles. They constructed impressive structures using mud bricks, designing multi-storey buildings with flat roofs and intricate facades. The Sumerians developed innovative construction methods, including the use of arches, vaults and buttresses, which provided stability and allowed for the construction of monumental edifices such as ziggurats and city walls. Joseph of Cupertino Levitation Saint Joseph of Cupertino is a character of legend. It's reported that by his mid-twenties he was able to take to the skies and float around effortlessly. The beginning of Joseph's life was truly challenging and tragic. For one, his father passed away, leaving a mountain of debt that caused his family home to be confiscated. His mother was forced to give birth to him in a shed behind that house, inside which they hid from the creditors. She was far from capable of truly caring for Joseph as he needed her to physically, mentally and emotionally. She was unable to feed him well and he was undernourished and sickly from the beginning. She became frustrated with him and could not hold back abusing him and taking out her frustrations on him. Later in life, Joseph was unable to learn at school or in an apprenticeship with a shoemaker. Many people who met Joseph supposedly reported him as dull and absent-minded, unable to form thoughts into speech and communicate like his peers. In fact, the only thing he seemed interested and capable of was becoming a servant of a monastery. He was transformed by this, became much gentler and kinder, and began begging for the poor. In time, he would be given another chance and become a Catholic priest in 1628. Many occurrences of Joseph's flights from then on are proclaimed. He was said to have flown up to plant a cross into its socket for some labourers, soar into the sky and hover over a crowd of people during a feast, and was even witnessed levitating by Pope Urban VIII. This earned him the nickname the Flying Saint. He was also reported to unblind and cure many sick children, so much so that the ill began to seek him out. Miracle of the Sun in Fatima In 1917 in Fatima, Portugal, many people claimed to have witnessed the sun moving. As they looked up into the sky, it became a well-defined, dull, great white disc which spun around and moved about the sky above them. Some witnesses say they saw the sun come closer to them, while others saw everything in a deep amethyst colour. One thing is for sure though, this was no ordinary Friday. Around noon that day in Fatima, spectators of the phenomenon began to see a change in the atmospheric conditions. Prior to this, it had been muddy and wet, and the air around them seemed to change. Then, as described by one man who was present, the sun started breaking. Nobody had any clue what was going on, and their view of our nearest star began warping and shifting. It appeared to spin and were around in the sky, changing colours, and some thought it even came closer to the earth. The wind started to blow, witnesses began to confess their sins, and soon enough, they realized the ground was dry. Their clothes were also dry. Many witnesses of this event believe it to be a true miracle, and supposedly the event quelled a growing atheist population at the time. Skeptics would probably point to optical distortions caused by clouds called sundogs, 
visual disturbances caused by staring at the sun, or even some sort of collective delusion. After all, there is no evidence that it rained as much as some witnesses claimed it did. Also, if the sun itself began moving and changing, it's likely that some of the millions of other people below the same sun would have reported the same things. All these people in Fatima, however, were there to witness a miracle told in Christian prophecy. It's quite possible that while expecting to witness a miracle, they happened to see some disturbances in their optical view of the sun due to clouds of ice crystals or stratospheric dust. While possible that reports such as that of seeing a violet hue over everything were due to retinal damage from staring at the sun for too long. The biggest hole in the story is that most of the reports of the event have differing details. Some saw purple everywhere, some others saw a blue and yellow sun, and some say it was brighter, clearer, and closer. Regardless of what you truly believe occurred in Fatima in October of 1917, the phenomenon is historic and mystical. Iron Crown of Lombardy According to historians, the Iron Crown of Lombardy was made during the early Middle Ages in the 4th or 5th century. It consists of a large ring of gold that is fitted with a silver band and some precious jewels, all fitted around an iron ring. It is believed that the Iron Crown contains a 1 cm wide iron band that was beaten out of one of the nails used at the crucifixion of Jesus. The crown became a symbol of the Kingdom of Lombards. Later, it was in the custody of the medieval Kingdom of Italy and was used for the coronation of kings in Italy during the 11th and 14th century. Today, this mysterious ancient relic is present in the Cathedral of Monza, which is located near Milan in Italy. According to the popular tradition, the crown was made by Saint Helena, who was the mother of Constantine the Great. She had discovered a nail from the true cross when she ordered to forge a crown around the beaten nail. She believed that it would bring blessings and good fortune to her son. Later, the crown was passed to Theodelena, who was a princess of the Lombards. She received it as a gift from Pope Gregory the Great. In 628 AD, Princess Theodelena donated the crown to the church in Monza. There has been a strong argument amongst the religious scholars over the authenticity of the nail that was used to forge the crown. To this day, there is no consensus about its authenticity. However, it is kept at the Cathedral of Monza just outside of Milan and is considered to be a sacred relic. According to the cathedral authorities, the inner iron ring of the crown is in perfect condition and has shown no signs of rusting, despite being made thousands of years ago. In one of the studies conducted in 1985, it was revealed that magnets do not get attracted to the crown's iron ring. Like many other artifacts associated to Jesus, this artifact is also likely to be a subject of debate amongst historians as well as the religious scholars for many decades to come. Gabriel Amoth was a Catholic priest and the chief exorcist of the Vatican. He was born in Modena, Italy in 1925 and was ordained a priest in 1954. Amorth became involved in exorcism in the 1980s and was appointed as the chief exorcist of the Vatican in 1986, a position he held until his passing in 2016. Amorth was known for his outspoken views on the subject of possession and the practice of exorcism. He estimated that he had personally conducted tens of thousands of exorcisms during his career and was a strong advocate for the Catholic Church's teachings on the reality of the devil and the need for exorcisms. Perhaps one of the most terrifying things he said during his life was that he believed the devil was inside the Vatican. In an interview with the Italian newspaper La Repubblica, Father Gabriele Amorth, a leading exorcist in the Catholic Church, defends his work, as well as that of the Association of Exorcists. According to Amorth, although the devil is not omnipresent, his presence can cause immense pain and suffering. The ritual of exorcism is a complex and challenging process that requires the full will of a man, and detailed that this can have physical and psychological effects on the human body, many of which you never recover from. As per his claim, he has successfully treated more than 70,000 cases of demonic possession. The evil spirit is believed to be pure spirit, and thus is considered invincible. When a person is possessed by the devil, they are often heard blurting out painful blasphemies. 
It is also said that the devil can remain hidden for long periods of time and can speak in different languages. These attributes of the devil are widely acknowledged, but those involved in this phenomena have said that you need to be incredibly well versed in order to be able to take on this entity. According to Father Amorth, he has the ability to transform himself, but at the time admitted that he was not scared of this gift. During his time as an exorcist, he carried around artifacts in a small pouch and believed that God had chosen him for this work. However, when he was asked if the devil could strike inside Vatican City, Father Amuth became serious and started to show slight discomfort. Despite his fearlessness, at the time he understood the gravity of the question and the potential consequences of such an encounter with this entity. This highlights the importance of spiritual protection in even the most holy of places. The individual in question has a history of attempts to cause harm to religious figures, particularly those of the Catholic faith. Back in 1981, Father Amorth detailed that the devil attacked John Paul II. Father Amorth said that although this dark entity was inside the Vatican, he never feared it and always felt like God was behind him. He said that it's for this reason that he kept the position of lead exorcist for so long, and detailed that many people were cured during his time at the church, noting that after they were fixed, they never exhibited any other problems. Demonic possession is a topic that is often debated, and opinions may vary depending on cultural, religious and scientific beliefs. From a religious or spiritual perspective, demonic possession is typically seen as a serious and real phenomenon that requires intervention from a trained exorcist or spiritual leader. In some cultures, such as those with strong belief in the supernatural, demonic possession is taken very seriously and treated as a legitimate concern. From a scientific perspective, there is little evidence to support the existence of demonic possession. The symptoms attributed to possession can often be explained by natural causes. Regardless of one's beliefs, it is important to approach cases of suspected possession with compassion, empathy, and an open mind. The Catholic Church considers exorcism as a religious practice that involves the expulsion of evil spirits or demons from a person who is believed to be possessed. The Catholic Church has a specific set of guidelines for performing exorcisms, and only authorized priests who have received special training are allowed to perform them. The Catholic Church recognizes that demonic possession is a rare phenomenon, and they emphasize the importance of ruling out other possible explanations, such as natural illnesses, before attempting an exorcism. Before performing an exorcism, the priest is required to obtain permission from the bishop of their diocese, who will typically consult with medical professionals and mental health experts to confirm that there is no other explanation for the person's symptoms. During an exorcism, the priest will typically pray, read from the Bible, and use holy water and other religious objects to try to expel the demon. The exorcism may take place in a church or other religious setting, and the person being exorcised may be restrained to prevent harm to themselves or others. The Catholic Church stresses the importance of treating the person with compassion and respect during the exorcism process. Overall, the Catholic Church takes the issue of demonic possession seriously, but also recognizes the importance of approaching the issue with caution and discernment. The Zozo Demon The Zozo Demon is a spirit you may not have heard of. This mysterious and newly discovered entity is not one to take lightly, and the story of its existence is as frightening as it is interesting. The Zozo Demon is a mischievous spiritual entity that makes contact with humans through the use of Ouija boards. Those who have reported to come into contact with Zoho state that he reveals himself by guiding those using the Ouija board into making figure eights, before moving frantically between the letters Z and O. Zozo's interactions with humans often begin friendly and cordial, but they soon turn frightening. Zoho has been reported to curse and threaten those who are present at the Ouija board. Believers in the existence of Zoho state that he has his origins in ancient times, dating back to societies from thousands of years ago in Africa. Still, his beginnings are shrouded in mystery. However, the first textual reference to Zoho first happened in 1818, in a book with the story of a young village girl who stated that she had been possessed by three different demons called Mimi, 
Crapule, and one named Zozo. In 2009, after years of obscurity, the demonic presence of Zozo began to undergo significant popularity through the work of a man named Darren Evans. Evans, a man from Oklahoma in the United States, claimed that he had come into contact with a demon called Zozo. Evans published his accounts through a website. In his post, Evans detailed how he had been interested in ghosts and the occult from a young age. Still, he admitted he had never seen or experienced anything like the demon Zozo. Zozo was different. Evans stated that Zozo revealed himself regularly, too many times to count. Zozo would adopt the presence of a friendly spirit before changing to more aggressive behavior, often cursing in what Evans described as looked like Latin or Hebrew. I was genuinely fascinated and startled by how many times Zozo showed up, even in many different states and many different Ouija boards, Evans wrote in his famous post. He continued to assert that Zozo also made many threats against his young daughter, who was still a toddler. Evans claims that Zozo nearly drowned her in the bathtub and infected her with an unknown affliction or illness. He stated this is when he began to suspect a demonic attack. The post by Evans soon started to gain traction among fans of the paranormal online. Readers began to tell their own stories, many with striking similarities to that of Evans. Whether or not you believe in Evans' story, many who fear the occult certainly do. In 2012, an independent feature film named I Am Zozo was released, which actually features a cameo by Darren Evans himself. Asag, the Monstrous Demon Many demons that are reported to enact cruel punishments upon humans today actually trace their histories back to ancient Sumer. Sumer is the earliest known civilization to emerge from southern Mesopotamia, and the culture of Sumer was founded on stories of the Mesopotamian underworld, which was filled with a wide array of horrific demons. A sag, known for his ability to make fish boil alive in water just by his presence alone, is a monstrous and dangerous demon. Upon his arrival, Asag was believed to be accompanied into battle with his army of rock demon offspring. Asag is known to be a large, round creature, with three legs and three arms. Asag also has no neck and features eyes covering his entire body. His skin is dark and hard to the touch, almost like rock. In Sumerian legend, Asag is believed to be the cause of disease and plague. He is the sworn enemy of Ninurta the Sumerian god of war, and was eventually defeated by Ninurta after fighting for days on end. Fulfilling his role of plague and disease, a sag was believed to linger inside a person's body and had the ability to enrobe any unfortunate human like their clothing. There are particular references to his ability to cause head fevers and to eventually cause loss of muscle function in his victims. It is believed that Asag was supposed to represent or was born out of racism and fear of the ancient Sumerian people. The Zagros Mountains and the Sumer region were home to groups like the Kassites, Guti, Assyrians, Elamites and Mitanni. These groups would raid and attack Sumerian cities and were thought as less than human by the ancient Mesopotamians. The dark, destructive demon of Asag is a direct parallel to this. Perhaps Asag is simply a symbolic myth or perhaps something much more sinister grew from the fears of the ancient Sumerians. In the annals of human history, tales of time travel and space exploration have captured our imagination. Imagine a scenario where these two extraordinary concepts intertwine, leading to a captivating narrative of a time traveler selected for a secret mission to Mars. However, Something different about this story is the fact that the individual in question returned with evidence, and this came in the form of a photograph that was taken on Mars. This man detailed that he was in the military for over 25 years and holds the rank of general. He referred to himself as Mr. Hayes and detailed that he was chosen for a secret space mission to Mars, a journey that would transcend the boundaries of time and plunge him into the depths of Martian history. Armed with state-of-the-art technology, he would witness the past of the Red Planet, observe its ancient civilizations, and unearth the enigmatic secrets that lay hidden beneath its rust-colored sands. 
He detailed that he doesn't have any family or children and said that dedicated himself to the United States military. This mission piqued his interest, and so he accepted. After several months, he was taken to an unknown location, stating that the truck had been completely blacked out. When he entered this underground base, he said that he witnessed phenomena such as anti-gravity vehicles. Additionally, he mentioned that the group was assigned the name of the Mars Defense Force. The general stood in the heart of a military research facility. The temporal rift opened before him. A convergence of swirling lights and energy consumed him, and in the blink of an eye, he found himself on unfamiliar ground. The red sands of Mars stretched beneath his feet, the crimson sky a stark contrast to the earth he had left behind. Once transported, he stated that the sensation was unlike anything he had ever experienced, a convergence of lights, colors, and emotions that defied description. The general proceeded to state that the military provides training for specific individuals at a young age through various programs. It is worth noting that he is not the only person to make such claims about the US government's involvement in these activities. Other individuals have come forward and admitted their participation in classified programs, recounting their recruitment at an early stage of their lives. According to Mr. Hayes, he was subjected to an implantation of a device in his brain, which he claims also happened to over 200 other individuals. As he surveyed the Martian landscape, the realization hit him. He had been transported to a future where humanity had conquered the cosmos, establishing colonies on the Red Planet. Mars, once a distant dream, had become a second home for Earth's descendants. But it was not just the Martian landscape that had changed. Advanced domed cities dotted the horizon, bustling with life, innovation, and the echoes of progress. The general's military instincts kicked in as he observed the orderly formations of soldiers clad in sleek Martian uniforms. The sight was both awe-inspiring and unsettling. The general's instincts kicked in, and he found himself working alongside Martian military leaders to devise a plan to protect the city and its residents. As the dust storm raged, the general's military expertise combined with Martian ingenuity. They deployed advanced technology, harnessed the planet's resources, and coordinated the efforts of the Martian defense forces. The result was a battle against the forces of nature itself, a collective endeavor that showcased the strength of human determination. When the storm subsided, the city was intact, its citizens safe within their protective domes. The general stood amidst the Martian leaders, his gaze fixed on the horizon. He realized that his journey across time had not only given him a glimpse into Mars's future, but had also allowed him to contribute to its resilience and survival. As the temporal rift opened once again, he stood at the precipice of a choice. He could return to his own time, armed with the knowledge of Mars's bright future, or he could remain in this new world he had helped shape. He chose to return, capturing a photograph of one of the outpost buildings. The general stated that he emerged from the rift with a renewed sense of purpose. He knew that the future he had witnessed was not an unattainable dream, but a potential reality within humanity's grasp. Armed with the knowledge of Mars's triumphant colonization, he became an advocate for international cooperation, space exploration, and the unity that had transformed a distant planet into a second home. Throughout history, humanity has been captivated by the concept of time travel, an idea that transcends the limits of our reality and delves into the realms of the unknown. While the idea has been a staple of science fiction, the question of whether time travel is possible remains one of the most intriguing and debated topics in the realm of physics and philosophy. The concept of time travel finds its roots in the theory of relativity, formulated by Albert Einstein. According to this theory, time is not an absolute entity, but is intertwined with space, forming a fabric known as space-time. This fabric can be warped and bent by massive objects, leading to phenomena like gravitational time dilation, where time flows differently depending on the strength of the gravitational field. Theoretical physics suggests that wormholes, hypothetical shortcuts through space-time, could potentially allow for time travel. These tunnels, however, are governed by complex equations 
and require the existence of exotic matter with negative energy density, a concept that challenges our current understanding of physics. Einstein's theory of relativity predicts that time dilation occurs when an object approaches the speed of light. As a result, a traveler moving at relativistic speeds would experience time differently compared to an observer at rest. While this phenomenon is not the same as traditional time travel, it demonstrates the malleability of time as described by the theory of relativity. Theoretical models suggest that certain solutions to Einstein's equations, known as closed time-like curves, could potentially allow for time travel. These pathways through space-time loop back onto themselves, theoretically permitting a person to revisit their own past. However, the mathematical consistency of these solutions and their practical realization remain subjects of intense scrutiny. In the realm of quantum mechanics, particles can become entangled, sharing a connection that transcends physical distance. Some physicists have proposed that exploiting the phenomenon of quantum entanglement could potentially enable communication or information transfer across time. Yet, the complexities of quantum mechanics and the delicate nature of entanglement make this proposition far from straightforward. Time travel not only challenges the laws of physics, but also prompts philosophical questions about causality, free will, and the nature of reality. The possibility of altering the past raises questions about the deterministic nature of the universe and the potential for paradoxes that undermine our understanding of cause and effect. Time travel introduces the notion of feedback loops, where events in the past could be influenced by future actions, creating a cycle of cause and effect that defies linear time. While these loops may offer fascinating narrative possibilities, they also present logical conundrums that challenge our intuition. Some theories within the realm of quantum mechanics propose the existence of multiple parallel universes. These multiverse theories suggest that time travel could potentially involve traversing between different branches of reality, sidestepping some of the paradoxes associated with traditional time travel scenarios. In the end, the question of whether time travel is possible remains shrouded in uncertainty. While the theoretical foundations exist within the framework of modern physics, the practical realization of time travel is fraught with challenges, paradoxes and limitations that are yet to be overcome. This strange footage has just been uploaded to social media, showing what appears to be a laser beam setting a small area of the ground on fire. The footage was sent to us from someone who lives in Chile and said that a beam of energy could be seen coming from the sky. Oddly enough, this isn't the first time that something like this has been captured on camera and it's caused various people to put forward their theories as to what this could be. One idea that was put forward was that this was an energy beam and could have come from a military aircraft. Although this sounds like something from a movie, the United States Department of Defense spends over a billion dollars annually on developing directed energy or concentrated electromagnetic energy weapons. Those who live in the area said that whatever created this beam of energy must have been extremely powerful, as when residents went to the area where the beam hit, it was revealed that there was a hole in the ground. Directed energy weapons have long been a topic of interest and speculation in the realm of military technology. These advanced weapons systems, which harness and direct concentrated energy beams, have the potential to revolutionize warfare and reshape the dynamics of conflict. The Pacific Fleet of the US Navy has recently announced that it has successfully conducted a test on a new high-energy laser weapon that has the capacity to take down aircraft mid-flight. According to a statement released by the Navy, the USS Portland, an amphibious transport dock ship, has successfully utilized a high-energy class solid-state laser system to disable an aerial drone aircraft. The Navy has provided images and videos showcasing this system-level implementation. The visuals depict a laser emitting from the surface of a military vessel. Brief video excerpts illustrate an object, presumably a drone, catching fire. The Navy conducted a test of the laser weapon system demonstrator in the Pacific, but the specific location was not disclosed. According to a report from 2018 by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, the specific strength of the weapon was not disclosed. However, it was speculated that the laser could reach up to 150 kilowatts. According to the commanding officer of Portland, 
Captain Carrie Sanders, performing tests at sea against unmanned aerial vehicles and small boats, will provide us with important insights into the capabilities of the Solid State Laser Weapons System Demonstrator against potential threats. The captain said that they are revolutionizing naval warfare for the Navy with this cutting-edge technology. The US Navy claims that directed energy weapons, referred to as lasers, are a viable defense against small boats or unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as drones. According to the statement, the Navy's utilization of directed energy weapons brings about immediate advantages to the combatants and empowers the commander to have more flexibility in making decisions and responding. Currently, the Department of Defense is working on directed energy weapons to combat various threats such as missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles. The Department of Defense and military departments are currently engaged in projects aimed at creating directed energy weaponry. These initiatives have included the development of various prototypes and demonstrators of laser weapon systems that have been successfully utilized in live fire demonstrations to bring down drones. The Department of Defense and the military branches are currently designing more advanced laser weaponry to combat larger threats. They are also creating various high-power microwave capabilities that can be used for engaging in missile or drone swarm attacks against military bases. In order for a military department to successfully transition prototypes to an existing or new acquisition program, it must find a partner to support the technology's further development. The Army has created a detailed plan that outlines the roles of stakeholders and schedules for the building of supporting activities. Although the Navy has successfully fielded multiple directed energy weapon prototypes and identified potential transition partners, they lack documented transition agreements. Meanwhile, the Air Force has not prioritized the establishment of transition partners, making future planning even more difficult. Failure to take these transition planning steps can result in misaligned directed energy weapons that may not meet operational needs and put both the Navy and Air Force at risk. Directed energy weapons encompass a range of technologies that generate and focus various types of energy, such as lasers, microwaves, or particle beams, to damage or destroy targets. Unlike traditional kinetic weapons, which rely on projectiles or explosives, Directed energy weapons rely on the transfer of energy to disable or neutralize threats. The energy beams emitted by these weapons can be precisely aimed and controlled, offering advantages in terms of accuracy, speed, and potentially reduced collateral damage. One of the key advantages of directed energy weapons is their speed of engagement. The high velocity of energy beams allows for near instantaneous target acquisition and engagement enabling rapid responses to incoming threats. This can be particularly valuable in scenarios where time is critical, such as in intercepting missiles or drones. Additionally, directed energy weapons offer extended operational capabilities. Unlike conventional weapons, which require ammunition resupply, directed energy weapons can operate as long as there is sufficient power supply. This reduces the logistical burden and potential risks associated with transporting and storing ammunition. Another significant advantage of directed energy weapons is their potential for precise targeting. The focused nature of the energy beams allows for selective engagement, minimizing collateral damage and reducing the risk to civilians and infrastructure. This accuracy can be especially valuable in urban warfare or situations where targets are located in close proximity to non-combatants. Moreover, directed energy weapons have the potential to overcome certain limitations of conventional weaponry. For example, they can counter hypersonic missiles, which pose significant challenges to traditional defense systems due to their extreme speed and maneuverability. Directed energy weapons can track and engage such targets with greater agility and responsiveness. However, the development and deployment of directed energy weapons also raise important ethical considerations. The potential lethality and range of directed energy weapons may present challenges in distinguishing between combatants and non-combatants, raising concerns about the risk of unintended casualties and violations of international humanitarian law. Additionally, the long-term effects of directed energy beams on human health and the environment require careful evaluation. Another consideration is the potential for escalation and arms race dynamics. The deployment of advanced directed energy weapons could lead to a race for more powerful and sophisticated systems 
increasing the risk of military confrontation and destabilizing the balance of power between nations. Furthermore, the effective use of directed energy weapons relies on robust and secure command, control, and communication systems. Cybersecurity concerns must be addressed to prevent unauthorized access or malicious manipulation of these weapons, which could have devastating consequences if exploited. As of right now, directed energy weapons represent a significant advancement in military technology with the potential to transform warfare. Their speed, accuracy, extended operational capabilities and potential to overcome certain limitations of conventional weapons make them attractive options for defense and security purposes. However, ethical considerations, including the risk of unintended casualties, potential long-term effects and the risk of escalation, must be carefully evaluated and addressed. As with any new technological development, the responsible and accountable use of directed energy weapons is paramount to ensure their potential benefits are realized while minimizing potential risks and harms. The International Space Station orbits the Earth, serving as a beacon of scientific exploration and international collaboration. However, alongside its remarkable achievements, the International Space Station has also become the focal point of intriguing reports and recordings of unidentified objects. Recently, some interesting photographs have been shared around social media, showing what appears to be two medium-sized black cubes flying past one of the International Space Station's cameras. As the live feed camera transmitted images of the Earth and surrounding space, a user online noticed two small, dark objects in the distance. They said that its shape and movements deviated from the expected patterns of space debris or known satellites. Intrigued, they started to take some screenshots in the hopes of better understanding what it was that they witnessed. They said that the objects were in the shape of a cube, saying that it maneuvered gracefully through the vast emptiness of space. The user said that it flew past the camera within a matter of seconds and displayed agility and speed beyond the capabilities of any known human-made spacecraft. With the mysterious object captivating their attention, they knew that they were witnessing something strange and so quickly grabbed some screenshots. They said that the object's flight patterns and advanced maneuvers challenged conventional understanding, raising questions about its technological capabilities and potential nature. After sharing the photographs online, some suggested that the small black objects were advanced reconnaissance probes from an advanced civilization observing humanity's activities from afar. Others theorized that it could be a result of a top-secret military experiment, pushing the boundaries of aerospace technology. Regardless of the explanations, the sighting opened up a world of possibilities and triggered discussions about the existence of intelligent life beyond Earth. However, Despite numerous attempts at trying to explain what these objects were, they remained a mystery. Interestingly, those who saw the photograph said that this isn't the first time that these objects have been captured on the International Space Station's live cameras and said that over the years, a variety of strange objects have been captured. Although NASA and other space agencies have said that these objects are nothing of interest and can normally be explained as things like space debris and camera glitches, this hasn't stopped users from investigating further noting that every so often these objects can be seen during the live streams. Whether these two small black objects were an otherworldly visitor, a product of advanced human technology, or something else entirely, its presence has left many unanswered questions, and as humanity continues its voyage of discovery, the enigmatic encounter serves as a constant reminder that the universe is full of surprises, waiting to be discovered. As mentioned, Numerous recordings from the International Space Station have captured objects appearing in the frame, exhibiting unconventional flight patterns and unexplained characteristics. Eyewitness accounts and footage reveal sightings of spherical, cylindrical or disc-shaped objects maneuvering near the space station. These objects often exhibit high speeds, abrupt changes in direction and anomalous behavior that cannot be easily explained by known space debris or natural phenomena. Several explanations have been proposed to account for the mysterious objects caught near the International Space Station. One possibility is the presence of space debris or satellites, which can occasionally pass by the station. However, the distinct flight patterns and behaviors observed in some cases defy the characteristics of typical space debris or known satellite movements. 
Another explanation involves misidentifications or lens flares caused by light reflections or internal optics within the cameras. Such optical phenomena can create the illusion of objects or anomalies in the recorded footage. However, the consistency of witness reports and the corroboration between different camera angles challenge the notion that all sightings are mere artifacts. The sightings of these mysterious objects have fueled speculation about potential advanced civilizations. Proponents of this hypothesis argue that the peculiar flight patterns and advanced technology displayed by these objects suggest the presence of intelligent life monitoring our planet or interacting with the space station. While this hypothesis is intriguing, it remains speculative, as definitive proof of advanced activity is yet to be established. The complex nature of this phenomenon requires rigorous scientific investigation and analysis of available evidence to ascertain the true nature of these sightings. The realm of outer space has always been shrouded in mystery, and astronauts, as intrepid explorers, are no strangers to encounters with the unknown. Several astronauts have come forward with accounts of mysterious aircrafts. Those who believe in this phenomenon have said that if you are going to believe anyone, then you should believe those who've actually been to space. Perhaps the most notable is the testimony of Buzz Aldrin, the second person to walk on the moon. Aldrin has stated that he and his fellow Apollo 11 crew members observed a mysterious object during their journey to the moon, describing it as a cylindrical object moving alongside their spacecraft. Similarly, Edgar Mitchell, the sixth person to walk on the moon as part of the Apollo 14 mission, spoke openly about his belief in advanced life and his conviction that mysterious objects have visited Earth. Mitchell claimed that multiple astronauts have witnessed these objects, but the information has been withheld from the public. In addition to these renowned astronauts, other space explorers, including Gordon Cooper and Story Musgrave, have shared their own encounters with unidentified objects during their missions. Their descriptions often include sightings of bright lights, strange formations, or objects exhibiting rapid acceleration and maneuverability. The testimonies of astronauts hold considerable weight due to their extensive training, scientific backgrounds and credibility within the space exploration community. These individuals are trained observers who have undergone rigorous astronaut selection processes and have extensive knowledge of spacecraft and celestial phenomena. The testimonies of astronauts who claim to have encountered mysterious objects during their space missions provide intriguing insights into the unexplained phenomena that occur beyond our planet. While skeptics offer alternative explanations and caution against misinterpretations, the credibility and training of these astronauts demand careful consideration. The experiences shared by these space explorers encourage scientific inquiry, inspire curiosity, and challenge our understanding of the universe. As we continue to explore the cosmos, further research and investigation into these encounters will shed light on the nature of these objects and potentially reshape our understanding of our place in the universe. Chernobyl wolves could be spreading mutations in Europe. The 1986 Chernobyl disaster left its mark on our history books, though its impact in our present remains somewhat unknown. In the explosion of the reactor itself, two engineers lost their lives. It was then in the emergency response that further injuries were acquired, with 237 people who were working at the time being hospitalized, 28 of whom passed away within the next three months. Additional fatalities that occurred from those impacted didn't seem to be linked to radiation particularly. But that does not mean that there is no need for concern. In truth, we know very little about how the Chernobyl disaster will impact the public and general population. Exposure-related fatalities are difficult to determine with precision, and so the true effect this disaster has had remains uncertain. It has been noted that there has been an increase in childhood thyroid cancer in 2011, with a possible correlation being hypothesized between the two. Research into the effects of radiation exposure long term is ongoing. After the disaster to limit the detrimental impact of radiation, the USSR built the Chernobyl nuclear power plant sarcophagus. This is a large steel and concrete structure that covers the nuclear reactor that had seen the disaster namely nuclear reactor number 4. By building the sarcophagus, the hope was that the most dangerous aspect of the disaster would remain largely contained, 
limiting the possibility of radioactive contamination. Furthermore, this sits within a larger zone that is highly restricted, known as the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, often known as the 30km zone, which prohibits people from entering this unsafe area. While we humans are not likely to forget the horrific event and can heed the warnings regarding the dangers of radiation and those of radiation contamination, the same cannot be said for the wildlife in the surrounding area. In the north of Ukraine, where the site of Chernobyl sits, there are several European grey wolves, alongside other rather large species, who call the Chernobyl exclusion zone their home. While no people occupy this space anymore, just like us, animals can experience severe and long-term health issues from radiation. We are yet to conclude the degree to which radiation can cause mutations throughout species. A 2018 experiment saw researchers monitor the activity of 13 of these wolves, using collars with the ability to measure their radiation exposure. Predictably, the animals saw an increase in radiation when passing through areas that we knew to be zones of high contamination. What was a little more surprising was that one of the wolves managed to wander 250 miles out of the contaminated region, eventually making their way back to Russia. Jim Beasley, a wildlife ecologist, based at the University of Georgia and the leader of the study, which was published in the European Journal of Wildlife Research, mentioned that this was the first time we have recorded long-distance wolf migration from the Chernobyl exclusion zone and outwards into the surrounding areas. He continued to explain that male wolves of about this age traveling great distances is something that we can expect, since this is common mating behavior though it does provide to us evidence that there are significant animal populations within the area impacted by the Chernobyl disaster. With there being a high number of wolves existing within the region, it falls in line with our expectations to see these creatures exploring further, looking to establish themselves elsewhere. Michael Byrne, a researcher of animal movement and ecology at the University of Missouri said, you'd expect that as a population of any animal, once it gets to a certain level, but can only hold so many, so young animals will disperse. Studies that have previously been conducted revealed that the exposure to the radiation has the ability to cause mutations and other health hazards, though this research was primarily focused upon smaller creatures such as birds, rodents and insects. These studies have revealed that an animal's movements do have the capability to spread radioactive contaminants through their movements. We don't have a definitive idea as to whether this same information is applicable to animals such as wolves. It's definitely a plausible outcome. Some of the mutations that have been observed in creatures exposed thus far have included tumors, cataracts, smaller brain sizes, and some developmental differences and abnormalities. Regarding this specific study, it's worth noting that these harmful mutations likely would limit the movement of a wolf and so one able to travel great distances is not as likely to have been impacted by the radiation levels in too extreme of a manner. Overall, the truth is that there is a lot of mystery left to be uncovered here. 168 Mysterious Nazca Geoglyphs in the Desert Sands of Peru A recent discovery revealed 168 geoglyphs in the sands of the Nazca Desert, Peru, in an area known as the Nazca Lines. The geoglyphs were interpreted by researchers at the Yamagata University of Japan and showcased several snakes, felines, birds, killer whales, humans, and camelids. The geoglyphs are pictographic. One of the human geoglyphs resembles a cartoon-like drawing of a person with large unrealistic eyes and what archaeologists think is supposed to be a beard or stubble on the face. So far, archaeologists believe these geoglyphs are dated somewhere between 100 BC and 300 AD, but there is still some uncertainty to be had since some researchers believe the Nazca lines can be dated back all the way to 400 BC. Yamagata University published the photographs they took of the geoglyphs, some edited to highlight the original lines, which otherwise are difficult to see due to centuries of the glyphs gradually deteriorating. The IBM Thomas J. Watson Research Center of New York worked in tandem with Yamagata University. The two organizations utilized artificial intelligence to scan the site of the geoglyphs in hopes that the AI would recognize the markings better and more clearly. Things that researchers worried they might have overlooked or missed. Yamagata University publicly stated, 
by using the newly discovered geoglyphs for AI analysis. Yamagata University aims to clarify the distribution patterns of the geoglyphs. The results of this research will also be used for geoglyph conservation activities. The Yamagata research took place in the period between June 2019 and February 2020. These 168 geoglyphs are far from the only ones located in the area of the Nazca Lines. The entire site is full of glyphs of all kinds. Every one of these geoglyphs follows a pictorial pattern and was created on the Peruvian desert floor. The towns of Nazca and Palpa are included in landmarks and are considered to be one of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. The Nazca Lines span 400 kilometers. In the past, archaeologists discovered that at the end of the Nazca Lines were wooden snakes dug into the ground. These snakes proved to researchers that the people living in the basin used basic tools to create the geoglyphs. All the geoglyphs are composed of simplistic shapes, but that doesn't take away from their beauty. Alongside those recently discovered, other geoglyphs have been found representing hummingbirds, monkeys, spiders, mythical creatures, and dogs. It's thought that the Nazca lines were made by taking out dark pebbles from the sand surface and revealing the white sand beneath it in creating these shapes. With the discovery of brand new geoglyphs, the total number of found icons is 358, but experts state that they believe several hundred are still out there to be discovered. Peruvian archaeologist Luis Jaime Castillo has openly commented that he thinks only 5% of the Nazca lines have been uncovered. It's tricky to see their full designs unless one is on high ground looking down at the marbles. The Nazca lines were initially found in 1939 when a pilot flew overhead, but it's believed the surrounding locals witnessed their beauty long before from the heights of the hilltops. The reasoning behind their existence remains undetermined. Some archaeologists argue that it was supposed to serve an observatory purpose and work somewhat like a sundial, though other researchers believe that they were simply works of art. For now, it remains a debate. One of the oldest stars in the galaxy has a planet. Our universe took a lot of evolving and developing to get where it is today, so it is somewhat strange when we find aspects that we know are not that old existing in the early days of the universe. In the early universe, we simply did not have all the scientific elements that we have today. The elements needed to form rocky planets did not exist, yet despite this, astronomers have found right here in the Milky Way galaxy a rocky planet dating back further than you would expect. A little bit of an astronomical timeline is needed here to form this picture. The Big Bang took place, resulting in an abundance of the light elements in the universe – hydrogen, helium, and a smaller amount of lithium. About 200 million years following the Big Bang, stars began to form, and along with them, heavier elements developed in the cores of stars, including carbon, oxygen, and iron. Now, for rocky planets to form, we need those materials from the cores of stars, so we should not be able to find rocky planets in the early days of the universe. These planets should, instead, be gaseous like Jupiter. There is one planet that is being looked at in this study. It has been found orbiting TOI 561, a star that is an approximate 10 billion years old and is one of the oldest in our galaxy. This planet was found through the Transiting Exoplanet Survey satellite and then observed more closely using the Keck telescope. This star is part of the galactic thick disk, an area of the galaxy made almost exclusively out of ancient stars, giving it a unique chemical composition. The stars in the so-called thick disk are much less metallic than in the thin disk, adding even more surprise to the discovery that it is indeed a rocky planet orbiting the star. The planet named TOI 561b was first found when it moved in front of the star it orbits. This process stopped the shine of the star for a moment, meaning the light dipped and Tess could see the planet lurking just in front of the star. After this, the next step was to gather information on the planet. Not only is it rocky, but it has a mass three times that of the Earth's, adding more evidence to the belief that this is a rocky planet, not a gaseous one. TOI 561b is not the only planet to orbit this old star, though, but the other two are confirmed to be gaseous, not rocky. It might take some time to continue this research and unravel this mystery, 
though it appears that something is different than how we currently understand it, whether that is the timeline of our universe, the composition of this planet, or the elements needed to form them. 34-meter tsunami may hit Indonesia in megaquake. We can anticipate and prepare for the inevitable earthquakes that are eventually likely to hit certain areas. This technology is continuing to evolve, and as of November 2022, there are some details that we are able to gather to a staggering specificity. It has been predicted that a tsunami reaching up to 34 meters in height could follow an earthquake of an 8.9 magnitude, affecting the Java and Sumatra Indonesian islands. A research team has observed high levels of seismic activity along the coastal areas of these islands, indicating the possibility of a megathrust category earthquake. This was reported upon in the journal Natural Hazards, and whilst there was no timeline offered to the eventuality of this, it's understood that this is a somewhat inevitable event to occur. This has the potential to be comparable to that of the 2004 earthquake that left 180,000 people dead, having hit Sumatra. A disaster of this scale would be devastating no matter when it occurs. Though separate studies seem to indicate that an earthquake of this scale can be expected in this area every 500 years. The researchers were able to use data from several earthquakes that occurred between 2009 and 2020 to predict a magnitude of 4 or higher, along with an analysis of more than 1,000 epicenters for the potential tsunami. This inevitability is truly terrifying. We can only hope that increased awareness like this can help lead to further preparedness, in turn saving more lives. There are so many hardships that we face within our lives, and the advancement of technology is a double-edged sword. We can only hope that the continued development of science can be applied in beneficial ways. Two individuals purporting to be time travelers from the year 2027 have been uploading videos that they assert serve as evidence of their solitary existence in the future. The two individuals have taken to social media, asserting that they find themselves isolated in 2027, with no one else around except for each other, and a noticeable absence of any human presence. Both of the individuals claiming to be time travelers never reveal their identity in the seemingly empty videos, supposedly from four years in the future. They claimed to be a time traveler with a chilling prophecy, the absence of human life by the year 2027. Their arrival was shrouded in mystery, but the time travelers said they have a grim prophecy. According to them, the year 2027 would mark the disappearance of all human life from the face of the earth. He spoke of a catastrophic event that would unfold, leading to the unraveling of civilizations, the vanishing of cities, and the haunting silence of abandoned landscapes. He warned that unless immediate action was taken, this impending catastrophe would occur within the next five years. Users on social media listened with a mix of disbelief and concern. Some dismissed their claims as being delusional, while others contemplated the possibility that their claims might be rooted in reality. They pondered the repercussions of ignoring his warning and the potential consequences for their own lives and future generations. Although the idea of them being time travelers seemed far-fetched, their message weighed heavily on those who had read it. Many voiced their concerns with how the world is and said that it's likely that things are going to get worse in the future. They posted one more video on social media, telling people once again that things will get much worse before they get better and told people that an uprising will happen within the next five years, saying that people couldn't deal with the conditions any longer. Some pointed out that these claims are rooted in reality, with one of the time travelers' warnings being about famine. The issue of famine and its potential future impact is a complex and multifaceted one. While it is challenging to predict with certainty, there are several factors that suggest the possibility of increased risks of famine in the future. One of the primary factors contributing to concerns about future famine is the growing global population. As the world's population continues to expand, the demand for food resources increases. Coupled with environmental challenges, land degradation, and water scarcity, meeting the food needs of a larger population becomes more difficult. If proper measures are not taken to enhance agricultural productivity, improve distribution systems, and address environmental concerns, the risk of food shortages and subsequent famines could rise. 
changing weather patterns, extreme weather events and rising temperatures can have detrimental effects on agricultural production. Heat waves, droughts, floods and shifts in rainfall patterns can lead to crop failures, livestock losses and reduced food availability. Vulnerable regions that heavily rely on agriculture as their main source of food and income are particularly at risk. If adaptation strategies and resilient agricultural practices are not implemented, the impacts on food production may exacerbate the risk of famine. Furthermore, economic factors, including poverty, play a significant role in determining the vulnerability of populations to famine. On June 21, 2017, a couple in Montrose, Colorado, witnessed a peculiar occurrence in the sky. According to the witness, as they were watching the sunset from their front deck, the husband noticed bright lights moving in their direction from the west. The wife hurried inside to grab her phone, while her husband grabbed his Canon camera, and together they successfully captured images of the first object. While taking pictures and videos with their phones, they stated that one of their friends who was there at the time witnessed an unusual object in the sky, detailing that it can best be described as resembling a phoenix or angelic form. The object had a long and thin silver body that looked like a jet or cylinder with a potential nose pointing downwards. The couple managed to capture pictures and video of the sighting from two different angles, but said that it didn't look like anything they had ever seen before, saying that one of the first things that came to mind was that this object looked like a phoenix. The couple said that at the time of the sighting it was cloudy day, but noted that they weren't the only ones who saw this. It is unclear whether there were one or two of these entities, one potentially circling the city due to the timing of their separate appearances. The couple said that the shape of the object they encountered was not immediately evident until they viewed photos of it on their computer. They felt both eager and anxious upon seeing it, as they said that they have witnessed other unidentified objects in the past. However, this particular object differed from the last two they saw, which were hovering in tandem above a local restaurant. The image was sent to the Mutual UFO Network and was filed under case number 84548. Interestingly, this couple were not the only ones to report this sighting, but were the only ones to capture this image, and this was due to the husband having a telephoto lens, which is a long-focus lens that allows photographers to take images of objects far away from them. Various theories have been put forward in order to explain what this object was, and interestingly, some suggested that it could have been the mythical Thunderbird. Native American mythology is rich with stories of powerful and majestic creatures that inhabit the skies, and one of the most prominent among them is the Thunderbird. Revered and respected by numerous tribes across North America, the Thunderbird holds a significant place in indigenous folklore, symbolizing strength, power, and spiritual connection. In Native American cultures, the Thunderbird is often depicted as a large bird-like creature with wings that span the sky. It is believed to have the ability to create thunder and lightning, hence its name. The Thunderbird is associated with the forces of nature, particularly storms, and is seen as a powerful and sometimes unpredictable force. Different tribes have their own unique interpretations of the Thunderbird, but common themes prevail across many traditions. Among the Ojibwe people, for example, the Thunderbird is known as Binesi and is considered a powerful and sacred being. According to their legends, the Thunderbird plays a vital role in maintaining the balance of the natural world and has the ability to bring rain and renew the earth. Similarly, the Lakota people regard the Thunderbird as a sacred and powerful creature. They believe that the Thunderbird is responsible for delivering important messages between the spiritual and physical realms. It is considered a guardian and protector watching over the people and bringing blessings and good fortune. Legends surrounding the Thunderbird often intertwine with creation stories and important cultural beliefs. For many tribes, the Thunderbird is associated with the sun, representing its transformative power and life-giving energy. It is also believed to possess healing properties, with its feathers and body parts used in various rituals and ceremonies for their perceived spiritual and medicinal qualities. The Thunderbird is not merely a creature of myth and legend, but is deeply ingrained in the cultural fabric of Native American communities. Its image can be found in traditional artwork, totem poles, and regalia, symbolizing the tribe's connection to the natural world and their reverence for the forces of nature. 
Beyond its cultural significance, the Thunderbird also holds relevance in the contemporary world. Its image has been adopted by various organizations and sports teams, serving as a symbol of strength, resilience, and unity. This recognition and incorporation of the Thunderbird into mainstream culture is a testament to the enduring power and influence of Native American beliefs and traditions. The significance of the Thunderbird extends beyond its symbolic representation. Many individuals claim to have witnessed sightings or encounters with creatures resembling the Thunderbird. These accounts often describe large, winged creatures with incredible wingspans and extraordinary abilities. While these reports cannot be scientifically verified, they contribute to the ongoing fascination and intrigue surrounding the Thunderbird and its existence. The Thunderbird's presence in Native American mythology serves as a reminder of the deep connection between indigenous cultures and the natural world. It emphasizes the importance of respecting and living in harmony with the environment, recognizing the power and wisdom inherent in the natural elements. Some people don't think that this sighting was a mythical creature and labeled it as an unidentified object. The number of reported UFO sightings varies from year to year, and it is challenging to establish an accurate count due to several factors, including the varying definitions of unidentified objects and the reporting practices in different regions. However, it is evident that a significant number of sightings are reported annually, with thousands of cases being documented worldwide. One of the key challenges in estimating the exact number of reports is the fact that not all sightings are reported or recorded. Many individuals may witness something unusual in the sky, but choose not to report it for various reasons, such as fear of ridicule or a lack of awareness of reporting mechanisms. As a result, the reported numbers are likely only a fraction of the actual sightings that occur. Despite these limitations, several organizations and agencies actively collect and analyze reports. The National UFO Reporting Center in the United States, for example, receives thousands of reports each year. Other countries also have similar organizations or initiatives dedicated to recording and investigating UFO sightings. The Mutual UFO Network is another prominent organization that collects and investigates reports worldwide. In addition to these organizations, advancements in technology and the widespread use of smartphones have made it easier for individuals to document and report sightings. People can capture photos or videos and quickly share them through social media platforms or dedicated sighting websites. This accessibility has contributed to an increase in the number of reported sightings in recent years. Amidst the mist-covered waters of Loch Ness, a man found himself on an unforgettable vacation. He described in his post that he had travelled across the world to the Scottish Highlands, drawn by the allure of the loch and the stories that had woven themselves into the fabric of local lore. The man said that he had always been fascinated by tales of mythical beasts and uncharted mysteries. As he set foot in the town of Inverness, the gateway to Loch Ness, he was captivated by the air of anticipation that enveloped the region. Stories of Nessie, the enigmatic creature that had eluded discovery for centuries, were whispered by locals and shared among travellers. One morning, he decided to embark on a solitary adventure. Hours passed as the man navigated the loch, his eyes scanning the water's surface for any sign of movement. Just as he was contemplating heading back to shore, he noticed a series of ripples breaking the stillness of the loch. As he steadied his camera, his lens captured an astonishing sight. Emerging from the water's depths was a long, sinuous shape, a form that bore an uncanny resemblance to the descriptions of Nessie passed down through generations. The creature's head couldn't be seen, but a large round body could be seen protruding from the water. The moments lasted no more than ten seconds, but luckily he was able to capture a clear photograph. The man said that he marveled at the realization that he was experiencing a moment that had eluded countless others. As suddenly as it had appeared, Nessie began to submerge beneath the water's surface. He continued to watch in awe as the ripples dissipated and the loch returned to its serene state. He stayed looking for several more hours, but said that the creature never returned. The first mention of a submerged water beast residing within the area comes from ancient Pictish carvings, made by the Pictish people native to the region, that are dated to have been created as early as 500 AD. 
Many researchers have claimed the water beast carving to be a mention of the Loch Ness monster. However, images of the water beast do not seem to match expected designs of the creature, and so it is uncertain whether or not this is a reference to Nessie. The Pictish water beast carvings are known to account for 40% of all Pictish carvings, signifying great importance or emotion surrounding the existence of the creature residing within the area of Loch Ness. The first recorded direct encounter with a water beast entity residing within the loch is that of the account of St. Columba. St. Columba describes scaring off the water beast while visiting the Loch Ness. As a man was being buried close to the loch, the water beast was observed attacking a man. Thereafter, the saint scared the water beast away. Though the information in this account is not conclusive with physical descriptions matching the Loch Ness monster, it is within the same area of modern-day sightings and could be of the same species. The first known modern recorded encounter with the creature was made sometime during the year 1871 or 1872. Unfortunately, the exact year and date is unknown due to unreliable information, but 100% certainty can be placed that the event happened as early as the beginning of October, 1871, and as late as the end of October, 1872. The event was reported by a man known only as Mr. D. Mackenzie. Mr. D. Mackenzie did not make his report of the creature until March 26, 1934, and so the written letter was not included in any formal investigations made at a later date by Rupert Gould. Mr. D. Mackenzie's written letter to Mr. Rupert Gould is as follows. I saw it around 1872 or 1871. I was on the rock above Abriachen, taking home Bracken in October, when I saw what I took to be a log of wood coming across the loch. The water was very calm at the time. I expected it to go down the loch towards the northern end of Loch Ness, when it reached the middle of the loch. However, it suddenly appeared to come to life, and seemed to me to look exactly like an upturned boat, and went at great speed, wriggling and churning up the water in the direction of the castle. It was about twelve on a grand sunny day, so it was impossible for me to be mistaken. It was an animal of some sort, and I have told this same story to my friends long before the present monster became famous. Although this description fits the average account of the Loch Ness monster, it was not the first description of the creature made to public awareness. Due to Mr. D. Mackenzie's late report, his encounter is viewed as one of the newer reports following the year 1933, the earliest year for which reports of the creature were made, and is not considered credible or reliable information as it could have been swayed by public awareness of the creature considering the large amount of time since its claimed sighting and the written report. No attempt was made by Rupert Gould to investigate whether other individuals would back up the claims of Mr. D. Mackenzie, as his letter tells, so no further information could be gathered from the report. The first recorded report made on the existence of the Loch Ness monster that propelled the creature into popularity and mainstream news comes from a man known as George Spicer of whom claimed to have encountered the Loch Ness Monster on the 22nd of July, 1933. George Spicer claimed that as he was driving home, along the east side of Loch Ness between Dawes and Foyer's Hotel, he saw a creature described as having a long neck, a large body, a high back, no feet of any kind except webbed flippers where feet should have resided, no tail, and was carrying in its mouth a small lamb or animal of some kind. It was after this report and interview that the Loch Ness Monster came into mainstream popularity. Soon thereafter, other reports would come in of others, claiming to have seen a creature, but were too scared to come forward, as they might have appeared to have been unreliable. The first report featuring physical evidence of the creature was that of Hugh Gray's photograph captured on the 12th of November in 1933. The first reliable sketch made of the creature was made by a man known as Arthur Grant, of whom sketched the creature after experiencing a personal sighting. This sighting occurred on the 5th of January in 1934. Arthur Grant claimed to have made the sighting as he had been riding his motorcycle near the area, along the road, on his way home at one in the morning. He claimed to have hit a large creature that he undoubtedly believed looked strikingly similar to that of a small plesiosaur creature. Arthur Grant, 21 years old at the time, was a studying young veterinarian student, and so this immediately gave his story credence. He then sketched the creature of which has now become the iconic symbol of the Loch Ness monster, 
with plesiosaur-like features. Prior to this sketch, many had assumed the Loch Ness monster to have more closely resembled a massive eel, given the testimony of George Spicer. If the Arthur Grant story is entirely fictitious, the eel hypothesis might prove to be the prevailing shape of the Loch Ness monster. The second report featuring physical evidence of the creature was the surgeon's photograph published on the 21st of April, 1934. The first report featuring physical video evidence of the creature was taken back on the 29th of May in 1938. A man by the name of G.E. Taylor, a tourist from South Africa, visited the location while on vacation. He had originally brought with him a 16mm color camera to film his trip, but while visiting the area of the lock, he witnessed a large creature swimming around in the distance. He then began to film the creature for more than three minutes with the 16mm color film camera and captured the first physical video evidence of the creature. Unfortunately, the video was acquired by Maurice Burton, a popular science writer of whom claimed to be researching the creature, and so was given the original film along with any copies. Maurice Burton then hid the film, never to be released anywhere. The reason for this move became obvious when he finally published his book. In his book, he only published one frame from the video that is regarded as the grainiest and lowest quality frame from the video to claim it was nothing more than a hoax. However, video analysis proves the image to be evidence of a large creature, given the size of the waves, the distance of different objects, and the expected dimensions of the shot itself. This image supports the claims of a plesiosaur-like creature residing in the loch. Further evidence of a cover-up surrounding the creature comes from a recently posted letter found on the National Archives of Scotland, written by William Fraser, Chief Constable of Inverness Shire, on the 15th of August in 1938. The letter details a hidden development by the police to watch people of whom had claimed to have sighted the creature and to threaten them into submission and prevent them from gathering evidence. In the month of December in 1954, sonar imaging was gathered by a boating crew known as Rival 3. The team gathered data of a large object fitting the description of the Loch Ness monster following the fishing vessel at a depth of roughly 470 feet below the water. The object travelled more than 2,600 feet before sonar imaging of the creature was lost. Additional sonar efforts were inconclusive. In 2011, within the month of August on the 24th, Marcus Atkinson gathered additional sonar imaging of a four-foot-wide unidentified object following the boat for two minutes at a depth of 75 feet below the water. All evidence and sonar detection ruled out any kind of small fish or seal. Those who have investigated the creature have said that given the tremendous amount of effort made by the local government, skeptics and other agencies to cover up the existence of the creature, the behaviour points towards the most probable action that the creature is indeed real and fits the descriptions made apparent by Arthur Grant. Many witnesses and researchers into the Loch Ness Monster have made a number of interesting parallels with the Loch Ness Monster to that of the presumed to be extinct plesiosaur. Though many skeptics have rejected the idea that the plesiosaur would have survived a mass extinction event, the evidence for the survival of the species is a realistic interpretation. There are many species from the era, including shark species, that have survived this extinction-level event. Additionally, the plesiosaur species did not actively hunt and eat larger animals as originally believed, and evidence of stomach contents point towards the possibility of the plesiosaur being a bottom feeder, eating small fish, clams, snails and small squid that rested at the bottom of the sea. This eating habit would fit tremendously with the observed data of the creature resting near the bottom of the loch and maintaining a lower depth compared to other marine animals. Plesiosaur stomach contents have also shown evidence of devouring deep-sea vampire squid species. The vampire squid was originally believed to have gone extinct around the same time as the plesiosaur, as past theories of the plesiosaur believed it to be a shallow water creature. However, research now shows the vampire squid species is still alive and rests at much lower depths today. This could point evidence towards the consensus that the plesiosaur would not have faced extinction issues with a reliable food source. Additional theories hold the sentiment that the creature could potentially inhabit the loch at certain times of the year, if not less. This is due to the spawning theory. 
Many marine animals travel massive distances to spawn, of which could be a behavior the Loch Ness monster is also displaying. This could point to evidence as to why sonar imaging has sporadic data, and that sightings never seem to persist for more than a month at a time. Given its potential carnivorous diet, it is more than expected that the Loch Ness monster would have the physical capabilities of attacking and hurting any individual venturing too close to its native habitat. Officials and locals in Peru have said that a mysterious incident took place on the night of August 29th in the Peruvian province of Chincheros, specifically in the district of Ocobamba. Oddly enough, this happened around the same time as mysterious entities were seen throughout the area, causing some of the locals to suggest that they may be behind what happened. Many have said that the event has been covered up, but local residents have expressed beliefs that the notorious Chupacabra may be responsible. Upon discovery, the two farmers were surprised to find what they did. Each sheep had a conspicuous and profound cavity in its head, while the lambs had their eyes extracted. Upon further investigation, it was revealed that a significant number of sheep had also undergone the removal of certain organs. The distressing sequence of events began with farmer Emilia Ruiz Santos, who tragically discovered 16 of her sheep scattered on the ground just outside the enclosure where they had spent the night. Notably, another farmer named Segundina Quispe, residing in Palomino, faced the same distressing ordeal when 14 of her sheep were found in the same condition, mirroring the unsettling circumstances observed by Emilia Ruiz Santos. After receiving complaints, the Okabamba police station promptly responded by sending their members along with civil defense agents from the municipality of Okabamba to the affected area. In order to determine the cause of their passing, a coordinated effort was made with the National Agricultural Health Service. It was of utmost importance to thoroughly investigate this incident, as it had a profound impact on the local community, as stated by Okabamba County Mayor Henry Vilches Arango. This comprehensive response demonstrates the commitment of the authorities to address the concerns raised and ensure the well-being of both the residents and the livestock in the region. The speaker also confirmed that, apart from the holes found in their heads, there were no further signs of injury on any of the sheep. This unsettling event took place in the morning, resulting in the tragic passing of more than 30 sheep. The exact reasons behind this incident remain unknown, leaving the community in a state of bewilderment and concern. Prior to this occurrence, such an unprecedented event had never taken place in the region, leading to a sense of disbelief among the entire population. As news of the incident spread rapidly throughout the community, residents began speculating and attributing the passing to the infamous Chupacabra, a mysterious predator renowned for its attacks on animals. The incident in Okabamba and its resemblance to cattle expiration has captured the attention of many. In both cases, the removal of organs from the animals is a common occurrence. Upon further investigation, representatives from SANASA, the National Health and Agricultural Food Quality and Safety Service, confirmed that they thoroughly examined the sheep. Their analysis led them to conclude that the cause of their passing was not due to any disease, but rather attributed to a wild animal attack. This finding sheds light on the mysterious circumstances surrounding these incidents, and adds another layer of understanding to the peculiar phenomenon occurring in Okabamba. Several lambs in the Andean highlands, located near the mentioned area, are experiencing brain injuries, including puncture wounds, as well as injuries to their eyes, characterized by severe damage or even loss. Others have come forward with similar encounters throughout the area. In the heart of the Peruvian highlands, a farmer named Juan Garcia found himself thrust into a puzzling and eerie mystery. As he tended to his flock of sheep one brisk morning, he made a chilling discovery that would send shockwaves through his community and ignite fears of the legendary Chupacabra. Juan Garcia, a hard-working farmer in the Andean region of Peru, rose before the sun each day to tend to his small flock of sheep. The farmer said that his routine was simple and familiar. He would feed the animals, inspect their health, and ensure they were safe from predators. However, on that fateful morning, as he approached the grazing sheep, he noticed something disturbingly unusual. The Chupacabra legend has fueled fear and intrigue across communities, 
especially in rural areas where livestock are essential for survival. Tales of inexplicable livestock passings and sightings of the elusive creature have contributed to the lore surrounding the chupacabra. Upon discovering the sheep with strange holes in them, Juan Garcia immediately contacted local authorities and veterinarians. The incident garnered significant attention in the region, as many villagers began to speculate about the involvement of the chupacabra. Veterinarians and animal experts conducted thorough examinations of the affected sheep, analyzing the holes and the surrounding tissue. Their findings were perplexing. The wounds did not match the patterns of common predators in the area, such as foxes or birds of prey. The legend of the chupacabra, like many folklore traditions, holds immense power over communities and individuals. It serves as a cultural framework for understanding and interpreting the unexplained. In the case of the sheep, the chupacabra legend offered a narrative that resonated with the eerie and unsettling nature of the injuries. Folklore allows communities to grapple with the unknown and the mysterious. It provides a means of coping with fear and uncertainty by attributing events to supernatural entities or forces. In Juan Garcia's village, the chupacabra was not just a creature of myth, it was a symbol of the inexplicable and a source of communal solidarity in the face of an enigmatic event. In the realms of Latin American folklore and paranormal mysteries, few creatures have captured the imagination as profoundly as the chupacabra. This enigmatic entity, whose name translates to goat sucker in Spanish, has carved out a lasting legacy as a fearsome and elusive predator, terrorizing rural communities and leaving a trail of mystery and intrigue. The chupacabra is believed to have originated in the latter part of the 20th century, with its earliest reported sightings occurring in Puerto Rico in the mid-1990s. These initial accounts described a creature that exhibited peculiar characteristics, including sharp fangs, red eyes, and spines along its back. Most notably, it was said to prey on livestock, particularly goats and chickens, by draining their blood through small, precise puncture wounds. The legend quickly spread across Latin America and beyond, fueled by reports of livestock mutilations and mysterious animal deaths attributed to the chupacabra. While the creature's physical description has varied over time and across regions, certain key traits, such as its blood-sucking tendencies and elusive nature, have remained consistent in the lore. The chupacabra has become a fixture in Latin American folklore, weaving its way into the narratives of rural communities. As a symbol of the unknown and the inexplicable, the chupacabra has served as a means of explaining unexplained livestock deaths, disappearances and illnesses. In these stories, the chupacabra embodies the fears and anxieties of rural life, where livestock are often central to economic survival. The legend offers a way to grapple with the uncertainties of rural existence, attributing misfortunes to a supernatural predator rather than the complexities of nature. In various locations, there have been sightings and reports of a different variation of the chupacabra. Unlike the typical chupacabra, these creatures were smaller in size and walked on all fours. They bore resemblance to canines, although they lacked any fur on their bodies. Biologists who examined actual specimens concluded that these animals were either coyotes, dogs, or hybrids of the two. The bizarre appearance of these creatures was attributed to a condition called mange, which is caused by an infestation of mites. It is believed that these canines turned to attacking livestock because the infestation severely weakened them, making it difficult for them to hunt their natural prey in the wild. The news of the disturbing incidents involving Puerto Rican farm animals quickly spread, leading to a wave of complaints from farmers in several other countries. Mexico, Argentina, Chile, Colombia, and the United States all experienced a similar pattern of mysterious expirations among their own farm animals. The perplexing nature of these incidents left the farmers baffled as they struggled to find a plausible explanation for the sudden and widespread loss of their livestock. Discussions are abound regarding the alleged top-secret scientific experiments conducted by the US government within the confines of the El Yunque rainforest. This particular notion isn't considered too far-fetched by certain Puerto Ricans who already harbour feelings of being exploited by the Americans. In fact, they entertain the possibility that the US could have concocted a blood-sucking creature within the laboratory and subsequently unleashed it upon the local farmland, leading to significant damage and disruption. 
Such conjecture stems from a deep-rooted skepticism and mistrust, fueled by a history of perceived mistreatment and exploitation. Nestled deep within the heart of a dense forest, a man on social media said that his cabin stood as a sanctuary away from the chaos of urban life. Surrounded by towering trees and an air of tranquility, the cabin provided him with solace and the opportunity to reconnect with nature. The woods held their secrets, but he had always been drawn to the mysteries that lay hidden within the shadows. The man said that his fascination with wildlife led him to install a trail camera on the edge of his property. The camera was equipped with motion sensors, capturing candid moments of the forest's inhabitants. It was a way for him to glimpse into the lives of creatures that roamed the woods at night. One morning, the man scrolled through the trail camera's photos from the previous night. The images were familiar, but then something caught his eye, a photograph that he couldn't explain. Among the photos was an image that defied comprehension. Standing at the edge of the frame was a figure that seemed to bridge the line between the human and the animal, a creature with the body of a man and the head of a wolf. The man couldn't explain what he was looking at. He zoomed in, examining every detail, the creature's fur and the texture of its skin. It was as if the camera had captured the embodiment of the legends he had heard, the elusive dogman. Determined to unravel the mystery behind the photograph, the man embarked on a quest for answers. He reached out to researchers and joined online communities dedicated to unexplained phenomena. As he delved deeper, the man found himself torn between skepticism and a yearning to believe. Months later, armed with newfound knowledge and a renewed determination, the man said that he decided to place additional trail cameras throughout the forest. He was compelled to capture another image of the elusive creature to validate his initial encounter. However, as of right now, the man reported that the creature has not returned. Many who have seen the image have said that it's the elusive dogman. In the annals of cryptozoology, a creature known as the dogman has captured the imaginations of many, blending the elements of the familiar with the mysterious. With reports spanning across various regions and cultures, the dogman is a cryptid that straddles the line between myth and reality. This enigmatic creature, often described as a hybrid of man and canine, has ignited debates, inspired stories, and fueled curiosity among enthusiasts of the unknown. The legend of the dogman is deeply rooted in folklore and oral traditions, with stories dating back centuries in different parts of the world. Variations of the creature are found in Native American legends, European tales, and other cultural narratives. While descriptions of the creature can vary, a common thread is the hybrid nature of a humanoid figure with distinct canine features, often characterized by its upright stance and canine-like head. The dogman's name may vary from region to region, but the essence of the legend remains consistent, an elusive creature that traverses the boundary between the human and animal realms. Descriptions of the dogman often depict a creature with the body of a muscular human and the head of a wolf or large dog. It stands on its hind legs, exuding a sense of both predatory strength and intelligence. Witnesses report encountering the creature in remote wooded areas, during late hours, or in proximity to water sources. While skeptics attribute these accounts to misidentifications of known animals, or exaggerations of encounters with regular wildlife, those who believe in the existence of the dogman maintain that the creature represents an unexplained mystery that defies categorization. The legend of the dogman has transcended its origins to become a contemporary subject of fascination. It has inspired books, documentaries, podcasts, and online communities dedicated to exploring the phenomenon. Researchers and enthusiasts alike continue to investigate reported sightings and analyze evidence to decipher the truth behind the legend. The dogman's enduring allure lies in its ability to straddle the line between reality and myth drawing upon humanity's fascination with the mysterious and the unexplained. Its presence in popular culture has cemented its status as a figure that captures the imagination, making it a topic of intrigue for those who are drawn to stories that blur the boundaries between the natural and the supernatural. The legend of the dogman also underscores the power of folklore, 
and its role in shaping cultural narratives. Throughout history, stories of cryptids and mysterious creatures have served as cautionary tales, explanations for the unexplained, and ways of processing the mysteries of the natural world. These tales often resonate with our primal fears and curiosity, tapping into our fascination with the unknown and our desire to explore the uncharted territories of our imagination. Folklore and legends have a way of evolving and adapting to changing times, reflecting the concerns, beliefs and hopes of societies across generations. The enduring popularity of the Dogman demonstrates how these stories continue to capture our collective imagination, offering a sense of wonder and a reminder that mysteries still persist in our world. Interestingly, these sightings have been reported all across the world, leading many to question the creature's true identity. Brazil, a land rich in diverse cultures and natural beauty, is also home to a wide array of folklore and legends that have been passed down through generations. Among these stories, the tales of werewolves and dogman stand out as enigmatic and chilling. The concept of werewolves, humans who transform into wolves or wolf-like creatures under certain conditions, is not unique to Brazil. However, the Brazilian werewolf legends bear cultural and regional nuances that shape their narratives. In the southern regions of Brazil, particularly in states like Rio Grande do Sul, stories of the Lobisomum have been passed down for generations. These creatures are said to be people who transform into wolf-like beings during full moons or as a result of a curse. These legends often serve as cautionary tales, warning against venturing into the wilderness after dark. One variation of the Brazilian werewolf legend involves a pact with the devil. According to the stories, individuals who make a pact in exchange for power or riches are cursed to become lobisomans. These tales reflect the cultural belief in supernatural consequences for those who stray from moral paths. While werewolves are common in Brazilian folklore, the concept of the dogman, a creature with a human body and a canine head, is also prevalent in some regions. The creature is often associated with rural areas and dense forests, and its appearance has led to various accounts of encounters. Reports of dogman sightings in Brazil share similarities with those from other parts of the world. Witnesses describe a creature with the body of a man, covered in fur and possessing a canine head. Some stories recount the creature standing on two legs, while others depict it moving on all fours. One of the most notable dogman legends in Brazil centers around the dog of the curse. According to this legend, the creature is said to be the spirit of a soldier cursed for his wrongdoings. The creature is believed to wander the countryside, causing fear and trepidation among those who encounter it. Both werewolf and dogman legends in Brazil hold cultural significance beyond mere tales of the supernatural. These stories often serve as metaphors for various societal issues and fears. In the case of the werewolf legends, they can symbolize the struggle between human desires and moral boundaries, offering lessons about the consequences of one's actions. The dogman legends, on the other hand, tap into primal fears of the unknown and the dangers that lurk in the wilderness. The stories highlight the tension between civilization and the untamed wild, reflecting a cultural anxiety about the boundaries between human and animal realms. While many encounters with werewolves and dogman are steeped in folklore, there are also contemporary reports of sightings that add a layer of intrigue to these legends. Witnesses across Brazil claim to have encountered these creatures, sharing experiences that range from eerie sounds and shadows to actual sightings of humanoid figures with canine features. In the age of social media and online communities, these encounters are often shared and discussed, contributing to the ongoing fascination with the supernatural. As of right now, the stories of werewolves and dogman encounters in Brazil provide a unique window into the country's cultural landscape. Rooted in centuries-old folklore, these tales reflect the complexities of human imagination and the symbiotic relationship between storytelling and societal values. Whether viewed as cautionary tales or metaphors for human experiences, these legends continue to captivate and intrigue people across Brazil and beyond. As Brazil continues to evolve and modernize, the enduring presence of werewolf and dogman legends serves as a reminder of the power of tradition and storytelling in shaping cultural identity. These mysterious encounters, whether steeped in reality or myth, invite us to ponder the unknown, 
grapple with our fears, and explore the boundaries between the natural and the supernatural in a world rich with folklore and intrigue. One of the most enigmatic figures in history that worked to also be one of the most influential was that of the great Serbian inventor Nikola Tesla. Though Tesla would go on to make headlines across many different news outlets for a number of breakthroughs and inventions, there have been a number of rising rumors and secrets in the modern day, gathered from letters he's written to friends and investors that have led to the realization of many hidden things about the inventor never known before. An interesting FBI document has been released that details Nikola Tesla did in fact create a death ray. The article reads as follows. References made to the Bureau letter dated January 21, 1943, which bore a caption similar to that mentioned above. The reference letter dealt with the death, on January 7, 1943, of the famous inventor Nikola Tesla, who as well as being the inventor of alternating current, perfected many electrical devices. He is also credited with having developed the death ray, which would safeguard any country from attack by air. On June 9, 1945, a Ralph Bergstresser of New York City furnished information of a non-specific nature, indicating that it was his belief that persons sympathetic to Russia were making an effort to secure the effects of Nikola Tesla in order to salvage therefrom any models or designs of possible military value. Mr. Bergstresser claimed that he heard that Abraham Spani, president of the National Latex Corporation of Dover and Delaware, was the motivating influence behind this attempt to obtain Tesla's papers, which are presently held in storage at the Manhattan Storage Warehouse in New York City. Bergstresser promised to return to the New York Field Division shortly after his initial visit and furnish further and more specific information to support his claims. He was not heard from again until September 27, 1945, at which time he furnished the following additional information. He said that a boyhood chum of his from Wichita, Kansas, Blois Fitzgerald, had been Tesla's protege and one of the inventor's few confidants. According to Bergstresser, Fitzgerald, who is now an army private stationed at Wright Field, Dayton, Ohio, is a brilliant 29-year-old scientist who spent endless hours with Tesla prior to the latter's passing, during which time Tesla explained to him secret experiments. Bergstresser stated that Fitzgerald met Tesla in November 1942, but he has been corresponding with the latter since 1935. According to the informant, Fitzgerald had developed some sort of anti-tank gun, the details of which he presented to Tesla, who made certain corrections in design and specifications to further perfect the weapon. Bergstresser related that sometime in December 1942, when Fitzgerald was attending a meeting of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, he made the acquaintance of Abraham Spanel, who became interested in Fitzgerald's gun. Spanel offered financial aid to Fitzgerald, and the two were in the closest contact with each other for a considerable period of time. Bergstresser said that Fitzgerald had lined up a deal for the purchase of the gun, but for some reason, Spanel blocked this deal by reaching top men in the company. Spanel is then reported as having obtained a job for Fitzgerald with the Higgins Shipbuilding Company in New Orleans, and negotiated a contract with Fitzgerald for the purchase and manufacture of the gun in a manner which would return a percentage of the profits to Spanel. According to Bergstresser, Fitzgerald is presently working on the perfecting of Tesla's death ray, which in Fitzgerald's opinion is the only possible defense against offensive use by another nation of the atomic bomb. In this connection, it is noted that the New York Times of September 22, 1940, in an article entitled Science in the News by William Lawrence, Science editor states that Tesla divulged to Lawrence the fact that he had developed a death ray or teleforce, which Tesla claimed would melt airplane motors at a distance of 250 miles, so that an invisible Chinese wall would be built around a country against attack by an enemy air force. This electrical device would operate by the generation of power from a plant, a number of which might be located strategically along our coastlines, and the beam of which would melt any engine within a radius of 250 miles. Bergstresser stated that during Fitzgerald's acquaintance with Spinell, Fitzgerald had told Spinell of his associations with Tesla, and had apparently described to Spanel some of Tesla's most secret work. Bergstresser believes that Spinell, who he claims is definitely pro-Russian in attitude, is now attempting through legal procedure to secure custody of Tesla's effects, 
which are now held by Tesla's only heirs, one Sava Kosanovic, who is presently in Yugoslavia occupying some governmental post. Nikola Tesla, widely regarded as one of the most brilliant intellects of our time, is now recognized for his groundbreaking contributions. Although his genius was not fully appreciated during his lifetime, the years following his death have brought a newfound respect for his visionary pursuits. Tesla fearlessly delved into the realm of electricity, exploring its potential and pioneering advancements, such as anti-gravity technology and the enigmatic concept of the ether. Similar to many other influential thinkers from the past, Tesla's profound impact on modern-day life often goes unnoticed by contemporary audiences. It is through his extraordinary intellect that the world has witnessed groundbreaking inventions like electricity, radar, microwaves, radio, drones, and countless other remarkable advancements. Undoubtedly, Tesla epitomizes a man whose genius was destined for a different era. Tesla embraced an ancient mystical concept called the ether, which he discussed extensively and believed he could harness its powers to shape a future filled with extraordinary devices, transforming humanity's capabilities. This led to a well-known quote attributed to Nikola Tesla, wherein he envisioned a world where wireless communication would turn the entire Earth into a vast, interconnected network, allowing instantaneous communication and vivid visual and auditory experiences between people no matter the distance. Furthermore, he envisioned handheld devices that could enable these remarkable interactions. The inventor is often associated with a fascinating invention known as his oscillating machine. It has been said that this machine had the capability to create small earthquakes in its surrounding area. Interestingly, it was observed that the machine's power would gradually increase the longer it was left turned on. While some argue that these reports are exaggerated, there is a recorded event from 1912 where a journalist interviewed Tesla and he provided a detailed description of his initial testing of the machine in practical terms. According to the inventor himself, Tesla had brought a small version of his oscillating device, no larger than an alarm clock, and attached the device to the steel framework of a building still undergoing construction. After adjusting the oscillator, the building began to tremble and the structure quickly came down, with many believing that an earthquake had just occurred. The police had been called shortly after, as an investigation quickly began, causing Tesla to quickly retrieve his device and leaving shortly after. Although many now believe that the story was made up by Nikola Tesla for nothing more than additional media attention, others disagree given the fact that, theoretically, if an oscillating device could match the resonance frequency of an object, it could begin to cause it to vibrate and tear apart similar to that of a violin shattering a crystal glass. Today, there are no surviving mechanisms of such a device, though researchers are now well aware of a phenomenon known as resonance frequency, in which any element can be broken down when subjected to certain frequencies and vibrations. Anonymous is a loosely associated international network of activists and hackers known for their online operations and digital activism. Since its emergence in the early 2000s, Anonymous has captured the attention of the media and the public, often making headlines with their high-profile cyber attacks and involvement in various social and political causes. Anonymous operates under the philosophy of hacktivism, combining hacking skills with social and political activism. Their actions are often aimed at exposing perceived injustices, promoting freedom of speech, and challenging systems of power. One of their most well-known tactics is distributed denial of service attacks, where they overwhelm a target website's servers with traffic, temporarily rendering it inaccessible. While Anonymous is known for their disruptive activities, they also advocate for online privacy and freedom of expression. They have been involved in campaigns against internet censorship, government surveillance, and corporate greed. In the last few days, Hacking groups such as Anonymous Sudan have issued a threat to carry out a potentially devastating attack on the European financial system. Their primary target will be the SWIFT International Communications System, and various members have come forward and said that these attacks could have wide-ranging consequences. A video was recently published where the group states that they are retaliating against Europe for its involvement in recent conflicts. According to security experts, although this possibility may seem unlikely, 
Financial institutions should remain vigilant for potential attacks, as some of these groups who are sending these threats have a reputation for launching potent distributed denial of service attacks. Anonymous Sudan, a branch of the larger anonymous hacktivist group, issued a video and multiple messages on Telegram, cautioning about an upcoming destructive attack directed towards the European banking system. The post also suggested the possibility of targeting the US Federal Reserve. The person featured in the video adopts the expected anonymous approach, wearing a Guy Fawkes mask and disguising their voice. They suggest that the banking system holds significant influence. The issue with the group is that not everyone has to agree on the motives, as anyone can join Anonymous, and for this reason in recent years it has become known for engaging in this kind of political manoeuvring, which is consistent with their previous actions of issuing threats to other organizations. The video provides an overview of an upcoming attack, highlighting the knowledge and skills of the group in relation to the European banking system. One of the most notable incidents associated with Anonymous was the Operation Payback campaign in 2010. This campaign targeted organizations that were perceived as threats to internet freedom, such as the Motion Picture Association of America and the Recording Industry Association of America. Through distributed denial-of-service attacks and other methods, Anonymous disrupted the online presence of these organizations as a form of protest against their perceived infringement on digital rights. Another significant event was the 2011 collaboration between Anonymous and WikiLeaks. Anonymous launched Operation Avenge Assange in response to the arrest of Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks. They targeted various websites, including those of payment service providers and government agencies, in retaliation for their actions against Assange. This collaboration highlighted the power of decentralized activism and the ability of Anonymous to mobilize its global network of supporters. However, the decentralized nature of Anonymous also means that anyone can claim affiliation and carry out actions in the name of the collective. This has led to controversy and internal debates within the group regarding the legitimacy of certain operations. Some argue that it dilutes the group's message and allows for malicious actors to exploit the Anonymous brand for personal gain or nefarious purposes. In recent years, Anonymous has continued to make headlines with their involvement in various causes, such as the global protest movements like Occupy Wall Street. They have also targeted extremist groups, exposing their online activities and identities. Through their actions, Anonymous has demonstrated the potential of online collective action in effecting change and holding powerful entities accountable. As of right now, the group has made themselves a prominent and influential collective of activists and hackers who have made a significant impact on the digital landscape. They have challenged authority, exposed corruption, and promoted online freedom of expression. While their actions have sometimes been controversial and their methods debated, there is no denying the role they have played in shaping online activism and bringing attention to social and political issues. Some members of Anonymous have been critical of current events happening in the world right now, leading to certain accounts being banned. The hacking group Anonymous has been a subject of debate and controversy due to their activities and methods. Whether they are perceived as good or bad largely depends on one's perspective and the specific actions being considered. One of the main arguments in favor of Anonymous is their role as digital activists and whistleblowers. They have been involved in exposing corruption, advocating for online privacy and freedom of expression, and challenging oppressive systems. Their actions have shed light on issues that may have otherwise remained hidden, sparking important conversations and promoting transparency. Anonymous has played a significant role in amplifying the voices of marginalized communities and shedding light on social and political injustices. Moreover, Anonymous has used its skills to target and disrupt organizations and individuals that are perceived as oppressive or engaged in unethical practices. They have targeted entities such as oppressive governments, hate groups, and corporations involved in shady activities. In some cases, they have successfully disrupted the operations of these organizations, forcing them to reconsider their actions. Supporters argue that such interventions serve as a form of direct action against those who abuse their power and harm others. Additionally, Anonymous has been credited with promoting online activism and the idea that anyone can make a difference. By operating in a decentralized manner, 
they have empowered individuals to stand up against injustice and express dissent. They have inspired others to take action and have raised awareness about the importance of digital rights and freedoms. In this regard, Anonymous is seen as a catalyst for change, sparking conversations and mobilizing people to take a stand. On the other hand, critics argue that Anonymous's actions often involve illegal activities and violate the principles of law and order. Their use of hacking techniques, such as distributed denial-of-service attacks, can disrupt legitimate services and cause harm to innocent individuals. This raises concerns about the ethics of their methods and the potential collateral damage they may cause. Furthermore, the lack of accountability opens the door for malicious actors to exploit the anonymous brand for personal gain or to pursue their own agendas. Critics argue that this undermines the credibility and legitimacy of the collective, making it difficult to discern between genuine activism and malicious intent. There are also concerns about the potential for indiscriminate targeting and collateral damage. While Anonymous may have noble intentions, their actions can inadvertently harm innocent individuals or organizations that are unrelated to the issues they are addressing. The lack of centralized control and oversight within the group makes it difficult to ensure that their actions are targeted and proportional. As of right now, the assessment of whether Anonymous is good or bad is subjective and depends on one's perspective. Supporters argue that their actions serve as a means to expose corruption, promote transparency, and advocate for online freedom. They view Anonymous as a force for change and as champions of digital activism. Critics, on the other hand, raise concerns about the legality of their actions, potential collateral damage, and the lack of accountability within the group. It is important to critically examine the motivations, methods, and impact of Anonymous to form an informed opinion about their activities and their role in the digital landscape. Cybersecurity and cybercrime have become significant issues in today's digital age with numerous financial and societal implications. The financial costs associated with cybersecurity measures and the economic impact of cybercrime are substantial. To begin, it is important to understand that the field of cybersecurity encompasses various aspects, including technology, personnel, infrastructure, and policy. Organizations and governments around the world allocate significant resources to protect their digital assets and infrastructure from cyber threats. According to various reports, the global spending on cybersecurity has been steadily increasing in recent years. In 2020, the global expenditure on cybersecurity was estimated to be around $145 billion. This figure includes investments made by both public and private sectors, covering areas such as network security, endpoint protection, data encryption, threat intelligence, and incident response. It is worth noting that this estimate does not capture the full extent of cybersecurity investments, as many organizations also allocate significant internal resources to develop and maintain their cybersecurity capabilities. However, while cybersecurity expenditures are substantial, the costs of cybercrime continue to rise and pose a significant financial burden. Cybercrime involves various illicit activities conducted through digital means, such as hacking, data breaches, identity theft, financial fraud, and ransomware attacks. The financial losses resulting from cybercrime are staggering, impacting both businesses and individuals. Estimating the precise costs of cybercrime is challenging due to underreporting, varying methodologies, and the evolving nature of cyber threats. However, Studies and reports provide valuable insights into the magnitude of the problem. According to one estimate, the global cost of cybercrime in 2020 reached $1 trillion. This figure includes direct financial losses, such as stolen funds and monetary damages, as well as indirect costs, such as recovery efforts, reputation damage, and productivity losses. It is important to highlight that the costs associated with cybercrime extend beyond immediate financial losses. Cyber attacks can have long-lasting consequences on businesses and individuals, including legal implications, regulatory penalties, and loss of customer trust. Moreover, cybercrime can disrupt critical infrastructure, impact national security, and undermine economic stability. To counter the growing threat of cybercrime, governments, organizations, and individuals are investing significant resources in cybersecurity measures. The goal is to develop robust defenses, 
enhance incident response capabilities, and promote cybersecurity awareness and education. Governments around the world are allocating budgets to strengthen their cybersecurity infrastructure and establish frameworks and regulations to combat cyber threats. In addition to government investments, organizations are dedicating substantial resources to safeguard their systems and protect sensitive data. This includes investments in advanced security technologies, employee training programs, security audits, and collaborations with cybersecurity firms. The private sector, including industries such as finance, healthcare, and technology, plays a crucial role in driving cybersecurity innovation and best practices. While the billions of dollars spent on cybersecurity demonstrate the commitment to protect digital assets, it is essential to recognize that cybersecurity is an ongoing battle. Cyber threats continue to evolve and become more sophisticated, necessitating continual investments and advancements in cybersecurity measures. Moreover, the costs of cybercrime are expected to rise as criminals adapt to new technologies and exploit vulnerabilities. Drone finds 1,000-year-old village. We are continuously finding innovative ways to explore new places and terrain. One of the more modern developments in archaeological research is being able to use drones to capture images and share the view of places we have not been able to reach before. Back in 2013, a team of archaeologists managed to use a drone to reveal a village that has been estimated to be about 1,000 years old. The team sent a small drone to Blue Jay, a village that archaeologists first revealed in the 1970s. The village lies 43 miles south from Chaco Canyon in the northwest of New Mexico. This village is home to nearly 60 ancestral Puebloan houses that surround an area that was once a spring. Today, Blue Jay is somewhat in ruins. It is hidden behind various plants and parts are buried in sandstone blown down by cliffs. We have been able to find out a little about the ancient structures of this site through some excavations, though this drone mission revealed an awful lot more. Blue Jay received a visit from a small drone able to capture thermal infrared images. This let the team, quite literally, see what was hiding beneath the surface. The team revealed structures we have never seen before in a Native American settlement. Needless to say, this was a momentous discovery. Jesse Kasana, an archaeologist from the University of Arkansas, said, I was really pleased with the results. He then went on to explain that studies like this can show just how incredible drones or UAVs are in various fields of scientific research. This was not the first investigation of the site, with some excavations having taken place prior. However, the drone images both confirmed the presence of stone compounds we had identified and were already aware of, as well as showing us this new information. Once again, this is great news. The methods we have been using so far are seemingly reliable, and we now have new additional ways to confirm these stone structures without contradicting what we know so far. As with a great number of archaeological discoveries, the thermal images uncovered a lot more than the physical structures. We were also given a window into further cultural understanding. For a while now, Blue Jay has been considered somewhat unusual, a bit of an outlier compared to the surrounding villages. Typically, we expect to see some great houses or kivas, areas of public gatherings or ceremonies, though none of these trademark features of Chaco-era Pueblo sites were seen in Blue Jay. The thermal images show a dark circle in the wall of the plaza area. This means we can expect a wetter, colder soil here, which may be filling in spaces where the ceremonies, gatherings and alike events took place. We know there is an underground circular structure of some sort that had been missed when studying before. Not only can these thermal images show us areas of interest, but it also gives us a clear idea of where we can begin looking and prepare and plan a course of digging with direction in mind before any soil has even been taken up. Kasana said, Now that we know what household compounds look like in thermal imaging, we could use it to prospect for structures at other sites. This research method is not limited to this one area. The use of drones, thermal and infrared imaging are all invaluable to so many archaeological sites. The technology works because features like bricks or stone walls keep and release warmth 
in a different way that the soil that surrounds those features does. This means that even when structures are entirely buried, we can oftentimes view an outline of the structure using heat maps. Of course, the equipment is rather expensive and high-quality imaging devices are key. It's not a new idea to use thermal imaging. It is just simply an expensive and difficult process to initiate. What is even more complex is considering the expenses against the likelihood of crashing the drones. Cassandra described it as not a question of if you'll crash it, but of when and how badly. There are issues such as hardware coming loose or software glitching, all of which can cause devastating losses to the equipment. Another hurdle to this research technique is the legality. The Federal Aviation Administration has to implement a series of rules and regulations dictating what is and is not allowed when flying these sorts of drones. There are issues of safety and the law, but hopefully it will be resolved to enough of a compromise that this revolutionary scientific method can still be used and bring all sorts of new discoveries. Earth's crust is dripping like honey into its interior. A mysterious happening is occurring underneath the mountainous range of the Andes, our Earth's very crust appears to be melting and dripping deeper into the ground. Scientists discovered proof that our planet's crust has been flowing away into the Andes and has been seemingly devoured by the Earth's mantle. In a quest to confirm their data, researchers conducted a sandbox experiment comparing it with the real-life findings. The results confirm that several hundred miles of the Andes have dripped into the mantle. As it turns out, this is not anything new and has occurred worldwide for millennia. Scientists call it lithospheric dripping. The reason it's so profound as a discovery is because we did not know about it before. According to a researcher from the University of Toronto, Julia Anderson, we have confirmed that a deformation on the surface of an area of the Andes Mountains has a large portion of the lithosphere. The Earth's crust and upper mantle below avalanched away. Anderson compared it to dripping like cold syrup or honey deeper into the planetary interior, claiming this is a result of high density. Anderson believes that this lithospheric dripping is responsible for the shifting surface of the Andes. When it comes to geology, there is the upper mantle, the crust, the lithosphere and the lower mantle. The upper mantle is formed of solid rock plates. The lower mantle is where the tectonic plates reside, which are moved by currents of magma they can create oceans or cause earthquakes. Scientists have been studying the lower mantle and how tectonic plates work for a long time, but are still discovering brand new things in their research. The process of lithospheric dripping goes like this. Two tectonic plates crash together, creating heat. This immense heat and pressure cause them to thicken and drip down deeper into the Earth's mantle, like a sluggish drop of honey oozing from its pot. As this occurs, the weight affects the upper crust and tugs it down, thus forming a temporary basin in the land until the pressure becomes too much and the crust jumps skyward, like a spring forming mountains. This is how researchers believe the Andes were made. There is evidence in the central Andean plateau to suggest the mountains sprung unexpectedly instead of being formed over time by the process of subduction another way mountains are formed, which takes far longer over the course of decades, if not centuries. It is thought some of the Andes were formed by a subduction, but fragments of it appear to have only sprung up in our current geological period of the Cenozoic. That is to say, they formed within the past 66 million years. Scientists hope to utilize sandbox modeling in the future to test their theories, but are convinced that lithospheric dripping must be a commonplace occurrence for the Andes area. Alongside digital recreations, researchers used a plexiglass tank with the stimulated area of the mantle and crust with the use of silicon polymer to experiment. Anderson recalls, it was like creating and destroying tectonic mountain belts in a sandbox, floating on a simulated pool of magma all under incredibly precise sub-millimeter measured conditions. Furthermore, Anderson explained, the dripping occurs over hours, so you wouldn't see much happening from one minute to the next, but if you checked every few hours, you would clearly see the change. It just requires patience. Their sandbox experimentation proved that the Andes was created by lithospheric dripping, 
and that it is perfectly normal to witness it happening now, since the area is susceptible to it. Decoding Whale Language According to an international team of scientists that has started a five-year journey, whales use a pattern of clicking noises referred to as coders to communicate back and forth. Like humans, different tribes have their own special dialects. Scientist Shane Gero is working to understand the whale group in Dominica. Gero studied two whales having an active conversation back in 2008. They used their coda for 40 minutes, communicating and swimming alongside each other. He had followed the specific mammals in the Caribbean for three years. Gero would record their communication but had not heard a conversation live before. He was entranced. What if scientists had the ability to unlock the meaning of these clicks? They could reveal a shocking understanding of our natural world. For 13 years following, he continued to record more than a thousand audio tracks of coders and clicks. With the tracks, Jero annotated other specific notes such as which whales clicked at which time, their behavior during, and who or what was in their surroundings. With whales, the big question is whether any of this stuff is even present. Jacob Andreas, a natural language processing expert at MIT and member of Project SETI, tells National Geographic, are there minimal units inside this communication system that behave like language, and are there rules for putting them together? Other scientists say observing their behavior to give the findings context should go along with the millions of coders needed for computers to recognize their speech patterns. For example, hunting or mating clicks may have a specific clicking pattern or tone. It's the cocktail party problem, David Gruber, a professor at the City University of New York, tells National Geographic. Scatter a few microphones around a party and they'll pick up snatches of conversation. But watch people, tracking who touches someone's arm, who scans the room for better company, and the whole scene starts to make more sense. To understand the specifics of whale communication, Project SETI will utilize specific audio and video equipment. Some of the tools, including high-resolution hydrophones that record 24-7, reaching thousands of feet under the surface, cameras that scientists will latch to whales using suction cups. These cameras can withstand pressure at extreme depths. Lastly, drones designed to move in water similarly to a fish so they can record without disturbance. Once scientists begin their recordings, they will count on advances in AI to gather and conclude the data, identifying key patterns and elements of the whale's language. After these elements are complete, then comes the exciting part, attempting to communicate back with the whales. The posse plans to test its conclusions by broadcasting the vocalizations to the whales and monitoring the results. Their goal is to get the whales to respond back. The question comes up, what are you going to say to them? That kind of misses the point, Jero says. It assumes they have a language to talk about us and boats, or the weather or whatever we might want to ask them about. The primary goal is simply to understand. It's not about us talking to them. This is about listening to the whales in their own setting, on their own terms. It's the idea that we want to know what they're saying, that we care. All three of these mysterious underwater discoveries have one thing in common. Maintaining their habitats is what will keep the research developed. With climate change on the rise, each of these fascinating findings are at risk. Antarctica, the vast and inhospitable frozen expanse at the southernmost tip of the Earth, has captured the imagination of explorers, scientists and dreamers for centuries. Despite its harsh conditions and isolation, this mysterious continent continues to captivate human curiosity, inspiring countless expeditions and fueling a fascination that transcends the boundaries of geography. In the remote expanses of Antarctica, where icy winds howled and the landscape was as barren as it was beautiful, a team of scientists and workers had established a research station. Among them was Dr. Mitchell, a geologist whose fascination with Earth's mysteries had led him to this desolate but captivating land. Little did he know that his expedition would uncover a secret that would challenge his understanding of reality. The man submitted an interesting post on social media, detailing that his team made a strange discovery while carrying out their research. 
One morning, Dr. Mitchell was conducting a routine survey when he spotted something unusual in the distance. It was an object that stood in stark contrast to the snowy landscape. Approaching the site, he couldn't initially understand what it was. However, as he got closer, he described the object as a towering black structure that seemed to defy the very laws of nature. Initially, he thought it was a piece of rock that had fallen off one of the nearby mountains, but this wasn't the case. The monolith rose from the ground, its smooth surface devoid of any distinguishing features. The doctor said that it seemed to absorb the sunlight. As the team studied the structure, he couldn't help but wonder how it had come to rest in this remote corner of the world. The doctor said that he left his camera at the research station, so had to hike back to get it, and once he retrieved it, he took a photograph from one of the peaks overlooking the artifact, which also includes members of his team looking at the object. The doctor said that he is now retired and has been holding onto the photograph for several years. When the image was submitted, some believed that it was an advanced artifact, while others speculated it might be a geological anomaly with unique properties. As of right now, no more details have been revealed about the artifact or what happened to it. Some compared it to the monolith that was found in Utah. In November 2020, the barren landscape of the Utah desert became the unexpected stage for a modern-day enigma, a shiny metal monolith that seemed to materialize out of nowhere. Standing amidst the red rock formations, this mysterious structure captivated the world's attention, sparking speculation, intrigue, and a sense of wonder. As of today, the monolith's origins, along with the identity of its makers, is unknown. The monolith's sudden appearance, discovered by a group of wildlife officials conducting a helicopter survey, evoked a sense of awe. Standing around 10 to 12 feet tall, the triangular prism was constructed from a shiny reflective metal, its surface untouched by visible seams or markings. Its stark contrast against the rugged Utah terrain created an almost surreal tableau. News of the monolith's discovery spread like wildfire across social media, drawing the attention of both casual observers and amateur sleuths. Photos, videos and satellite imagery fueled a virtual investigation as the world collectively puzzled over the origin, purpose and meaning of this enigmatic structure. Speculation about the monolith's origin ranged from artistic statements to advanced communication. Some believed it to be a guerrilla art installation, drawing parallels to the minimalist sculptures of the late artist John McCracken. Others couldn't shake the notion that it might be a harbinger of contact from beyond our world, a notion fueled by the monolith's seemingly out-of-place location. As the mystery deepened, some theories proposed that the monolith could be a well-executed publicity stunt, in an era when viral content can garner global attention, the monolith's sudden appearance was not without precedent. Whether tied to a movie promotion, a marketing ploy, or simply a creative experiment in generating curiosity, the monolith had certainly succeeded in capturing the world's imagination. Just as quickly as it appeared, the monolith vanished from its Utah perch, leaving behind only a triangular depression in the soil. The monolith's allure extended beyond its physical presence in Utah, triggering a broader reflection on human curiosity and the enduring allure of the unknown. In a time when information is abundant and technology connects us instantaneously, the emergence of a genuine enigma reminds us of the power of mystery to spark collective fascination and inspire shared quests for answers. The monolith's symbolism extended beyond its material form. For some, it represented a metaphor for the human quest for discovery and exploration. Its emergence at a time when the world grappled with the challenges of a pandemic evoked notions of resilience, adaptability, and the unexpected ways in which the world can surprise and intrigue us. Ultimately, the Utah monolith's true significance lay in its ability to conjure wonder, the spark of curiosity that ignites our minds and beckons us to delve into the mysteries that surround us. The questions it prompted were not just about its origin, but about the very nature of exploration, perception, and the beauty of the inexplicable. As of right now, the monolith was given to the Bureau of Land Management and is currently in their custody. However, they have denied that the object is anything of interest and have denied access to it, 
refusing to elaborate on what the object is made of and where it came from. The concept of monoliths as cosmic messengers, left by advanced civilizations to initiate contact with Earth, captures the imagination and fascination of those intrigued by the mysteries of the universe. While this idea is speculative, exploring the theoretical ways in which monoliths could be employed as beacons of communication offers a glimpse into the creative ways advanced beings might attempt to reach out to humanity. Monoliths, with their imposing and enigmatic presence, possess a certain universal appeal. An advanced civilization might utilize monoliths as symbols of unity and connection, hoping to convey a message of peaceful coexistence and shared exploration of the cosmos. Placing monoliths in strategic locations on Earth could symbolize a desire for harmony among all sentient beings. Monoliths could be inscribed with intricate patterns, symbols or hieroglyphics that convey a complex message. Utilizing mathematical principles and universal languages, these engravings could carry encoded information about the civilization's history, culture, scientific achievements, and the fundamental principles of the cosmos. By deciphering these inscriptions, humanity could unlock a wealth of knowledge. An advanced civilization might strategically place monoliths on Earth to align with celestial events, such as solstices, equinoxes, or rare planetary alignments. These patterns could serve as temporal markers, indicating moments when they are actively reaching out or inviting humanity to observe the cosmos together. Such celestial choreography could emphasize their advanced understanding of cosmic phenomena. Monoliths could be designed to interact with sunlight or moonlight, creating intricate patterns of light and shadow over time. These dynamic displays could be interpreted as a form of communication, using the language of light to convey messages. By observing the changing patterns, humanity might decipher hidden meanings or receive insights into the advanced civilization's worldview. Monoliths could be constructed with precise dimensions and materials to resonate at specific frequencies. By emitting low-frequency vibrations or resonant tones, these monoliths could potentially communicate across vast distances through the medium of sound or even propagate vibrations through the Earth itself. This form of communication could transcend the limitations of conventional electromagnetic signals. If an advanced civilization has mastered the intricacies of quantum entanglement, they could use it as a means of communication with distant observers. Monoliths could be paired with corresponding entangled particles in space, allowing changes to one particle to be instantaneously reflected in the other. This instantaneous connection could be used to transmit messages in a form of quantum code. Monoliths might be strategically placed to harmonize with Earth's natural phenomena. Their alignment with ley lines, magnetic fields, or geological formations could create a subtle, yet perceptible resonance that draws attention to their presence. This synchronization with Earth's inherent energy could signal a desire for harmonious interaction between the advanced civilization and our planet. Imagine monoliths that react to the presence of sentient beings, emitting light, sound or energy, when approached by conscious observers. These interactive environments could encourage a form of dialogue between humans and the advanced civilization, sparking curiosity, exploration and the exchange of ideas. The monoliths could be placed in regions of Earth with historically significant or scientifically intriguing sites. By establishing a connection between these terrestrial locations and the monoliths, an advanced civilization could encourage humanity to delve into scientific inquiry, fostering a shared curiosity about the cosmos. The idea of advanced civilizations using monoliths to make contact with Earth bridges the gap between science fiction and the realm of possibility. While speculative, the concept ignites our imagination and reminds us of the boundless creativity inherent in the universe. Whether as symbols of unity, encoded messengers, celestial choreography, or harmonic resonators, monoliths hold the potential to serve as beacons of connection and understanding in a universe teeming with mysteries waiting to be unraveled. A resident of Michigan had an intriguing encounter with what he believes to be an angelic presence. His home security camera managed to capture a remarkable image depicting an entity hovering over his pickup truck. Glenn Thorman, the fire chief of East Jordan, received two photographs via email. 
These photographs were captured by his security system. In an interview, Thorman explained the awe-inspiring experience he had when he encountered what he described as an angel. The initial photograph captures a hazy and indistinct image positioned directly above the truck. Subsequently, a second image depicts the obscured object in motion as it moves further away. Thorman promptly forwarded the photos to his church leader, Denial Mose, who at the time was serving as a pastor at the Jordan Rivers Church. Recognizing their significance, Mose promptly took to social media and shared the photographs. According to Mose, the presence of an angel symbolizes a divine protector who diligently keeps an eye on their home while they peacefully slumber. Throughout the night, they offered prayers, hoping that the angels of the Lord would encircle both of them and their property. This belief in an angelic presence reflects their deep faith and trust in supernatural guardianship. Mose stated that the photographs were completely untouched and were captured by a camera that is triggered by motion. These photos have not been modified or manipulated in any manner. The encounter with the angelic apparition is a profound example of the intersection between the mundane and the divine. In a world where technology often dominates our lives, this instance reminds us that there is more to reality than what meets the eye. The juxtaposition of an advanced surveillance system capturing a spiritual entity challenges our conventional understanding of the limits of perception and experience. The story echoes historical narratives of angelic visitations, drawing parallels to moments when divine beings made their presence known to humans. The fact that such an encounter was captured on a security camera highlights the contemporary evolution of our relationship with the divine, taking place in a digital age marked by both skepticism and awe. Upon reviewing the footage, the man found himself confronted with a profound mystery, a vision that transcended the boundaries of his ordinary existence. The encounter sparked a cascade of questions, leading to a deep exploration of its potential meaning. Such experiences often prompt individuals to turn to their spiritual beliefs, seeking guidance from religious texts, personal faith, and community interpretations. The power of interpretation is central to encounters with the divine, as individuals grapple with the question of whether the sighting was a chance anomaly or a profound sign from a higher realm. Some may see the angelic apparition as a symbol of protection, guidance, or a message of hope during challenging times. Others might interpret it as a reminder of the presence of the divine in our lives, transcending the boundaries of time and space. While skeptics may attribute the sighting to glitches or optical illusions, the encounter resonates deeply with those who believe in the existence of divine beings and the possibility of their interaction with our world. As of right now, there's many who believe that this was a genuine encounter. Angels, as celestial beings, hold a significant place in various religious traditions, and their appearances have been recorded in texts, stories and beliefs throughout human history. In the Bible, angels play a central role as messengers of God, bridging the gap between the divine realm and humanity. These appearances are often marked by profound significance, guiding, protecting, and delivering messages to individuals and groups. In the Bible, angels are described as messengers of God who serve as intermediaries between the heavenly realm and the earthly realm. They are depicted as beings of light, purity, and holiness, created by God to carry out specific tasks and convey divine messages to humanity. The appearances of angels are often marked by their awe-inspiring and supernatural nature, eliciting reverence, fear, and wonder from those who witness them. According to the biblical descriptions, angels are often depicted as radiant and majestic beings, emanating a heavenly light that shines brightly. Their appearance is unlike that of mortals, reflecting their celestial nature. In the book of Ezekiel, for instance, angels are described as having multiple wings, each adorned with eyes that symbolize their watchful nature and awareness of divine truths. The presence of angels is often accompanied by a sense of awe and reverence, with their appearance evoking a deep understanding of their divine origin and purpose. Angels serve primarily as messengers and agents of divine communication. Throughout the Bible, angels are dispatched by God to convey important messages, instructions, warnings, 
and revelations to individuals, communities, and even entire nations. Their appearances signal significant events, moments of guidance, or divine interventions in the course of human history. One of the most well-known appearances of an angel is found in the story of the Annunciation in the New Testament. The angel Gabriel appears to the Virgin Mary, announcing her role in giving birth to Jesus Christ. This divine encounter marks the beginning of the incarnation of God's Son on earth, highlighting the pivotal role that angels play in shaping the narrative of salvation. Angelic appearances in the Bible often carry deep symbolic meaning and spiritual guidance. Angels serve as symbols of God's presence, protection and guidance during moments of uncertainty, fear or despair. The appearance of angels can provide reassurance, comfort and a reminder of God's watchful care over humanity. In the story of Hagar in the book of Genesis, an angel appears to her in the wilderness, assuring her of God's concern for her and her unborn child. This encounter serves as a powerful reminder that even in times of distress, God's providence and protection are ever-present. Human responses to the appearance of angels in the Bible are marked by a mix of fear, awe, and humility. The supernatural nature of these celestial beings elicits a sense of reverence and wonder, often causing individuals to fall to the ground in worship or bow down in recognition of their divine origin. In the story of the shepherd's encounter with angels announcing the birth of Jesus, the shepherds are initially filled with fear. However, the angel's message of good news of great joy reassures them and leads them to Bethlehem to witness the fulfillment of God's promise. Consciousness, the very essence of human experience, remains one of the most profound and enigmatic aspects of our existence. Throughout history, philosophers, scientists and thinkers have grappled with the question of what consciousness truly is and how it arises. Despite advances in neuroscience and psychology, the mysteries of consciousness continue to elude a complete understanding. Consciousness is the awareness of our thoughts, sensations, emotions, and the world around us. Yet, attempting to define consciousness in precise terms proves to be an elusive endeavor. It is simultaneously subjective and deeply personal, making it difficult to capture within the confines of language or scientific measurement. Philosophically, Consciousness raises questions about the nature of self, free will, and the relationship between the mind and the body. The concept of qualia, the subjective intrinsic qualities of experiences, adds another layer of complexity as it highlights that not only do we experience the external world, but we also possess unique and unshareable perspectives on those experiences. In Contemporary Philosophy of Mind, David Chalmers introduced the hard problem of consciousness, this term refers to the challenge of explaining why and how subjective experiences arise from physical processes in the brain. While science can provide insights into the neural correlates of consciousness, it struggles to account for the qualitative, first-person nature of conscious experience. The hard problem raises profound questions about the nature of reality, suggesting that consciousness might be fundamentally different from other natural phenomena, necessitating new ways of understanding the relationship between the physical and the mental. Neuroscience has made significant strides in understanding the neural basis of consciousness. Studies using advanced brain imaging techniques have identified regions of the brain associated with various conscious experiences, such as perception, memory, and emotion. However, these correlations between brain activity and conscious states do not fully explain the nature of consciousness itself. The binding problem, an aspect of consciousness research, concerns how disparate sensory inputs and cognitive processes are integrated into a unified and coherent conscious experience. This challenge highlights the complexity of the brain's information processing and the need to uncover the mechanisms that give rise to our integrated sense of self. Exploring altered states of consciousness, such as dreams, meditation, psychedelic experiences, and near-death experiences, offers a glimpse into the flexibility and plasticity of human consciousness. These states challenge conventional notions of reality and highlight the dynamic nature of our awareness. Dreams, for instance, provide a canvas for the mind to create vivid and immersive experiences that differ from waking life. The phenomenon of lucid dreaming, where individuals become aware that they are dreaming and can sometimes influence the dream's course, underscores the malleability of consciousness, 
and its potential dissociation from the constraints of physical reality. As advances in artificial intelligence continue to reshape our world, questions arise about the potential for creating conscious machines. This inquiry touches upon the philosophical problem of whether consciousness is an emergent property of complex information processing or if it entails a unique form of subjective experience. So, what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you.